But as always for the movies, I just want to know what you guys thought of this movie. I thought it was good. <laughs> Me too. To, it was pretty close to like, it didn't, I didn't feel like it missed a lot of things like mm. the other ones. I felt like. I think it missed the, especially the a beginning. feeling. Mm. It It didn't feel like the book because the movie was more positive it like you, you know i'm like watching it like feeling good harry's like standing a little taller it, it didn't mm. didn't capture um the pain and torture that the book did like with umbridge oh, and some yeah, of the dark moments true. and the the turmoil it it didn't feel like it fully captured that but i'm okay with it it yeah. made it very easy to watch that was something we i think we all mentioned that um at the end of when we watched the movie and this is something that I saw in this movie. The movie was paced really well, but this is the only book that's not paced really well. And that's mm. why people struggle with reading this, the Order mm. of the Phoenix, because it seems like it's not paced great, because you're just getting a lot of umbrage. But I feel like for movie's sake, this is maybe the best paced movie. Like it just goes yeah. one thing to the next. And like you're getting a good amount of information there too. But it's like you don't get the time of agony with umbridge you get a few scenes of her, and you kind of hate her and, and imelda stanton does great as umbridge mm. but you don't hate her as much as you hate her in the books in the books she is you are just every page you're like please let this be the page that she you know dies or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it was weird that the umbridge torture montage was that it was a montage it was like one moment however long this mm. like one song and it was mixed up with the dumbledore's army stuff so it was going mm. back and forth uh umbridge doing something lame harry teaching everyone how to do a new spell umbridge being mean to someone harry making sure the army is growing and learning and that balance meant that you never felt despair when she was like torturing yeah um because you would always be it would be followed up by something hopeful mm -hmm. so yeah missing the theme but fun to watch yeah, it's like a fun movie. Yeah. It's a... I think it's one of the better adaptations that you see, we've seen so far. Like, you guys liked... I mean, it's hard because we watched some of the others a while ago, but did you like this better than some of the other ones or not quite as much? Like, do you have a ranking of the movies so far? That might be tough. The one that always sticks out to me, I think, is the um, second book, that movie. Chamber of Secrets? Yeah. Like, that whole snake scene with the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. The basilisk. That was one of the cooler scenes, like how they made yeah. the Chamber of Secrets look. That was really awesome. Mm -hmm. But if that says anything, I don't know. That's the one <laughs> I like sticks out. Yeah, yeah. But the production yeah, value keeps going up. Every movie yeah, is better than the true. last. It yeah. seems, and and we're catching up to current time. You know, like the, it was made the most recently compared to the other movies we've mm -hmm. seen. Um, I feel like my ranking might be similar to the books. I feel like the acting know. has gotten a lot better too, though. Yeah, true. Like all those kid stars, right? Like yeah. now I'm like, okay, like mm. Hermione, she's changed a lot. Whatever yeah. her actress name is. I can't remember. Emma, Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. Because she was kind of like newbie. Yeah. <laughs> first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There, I feel like this is almost one of the movies where they kind of became conscious conscious actors hmm. where they're like making decisions through things. I feel like the first few, they're kids and they just give lines and they like yeah. recite those lines. Then in the fourth one, I feel like they're still like kind of goofy and, you know, they're still like kiddish. So I feel like this is the one where you can see them making conscious decisions for how to act and like trying to become better actors. Hmm. I think it worked for someone. I don't think it worked for others. Ooh, interesting. So, Who do you think it didn't work for? Um, I... I don't think this is a good um, a Hermione movie. Hmm. And one of the reasons why I think that is because she was so good in the books. Like everything was centered around what Hermione was doing. And I just don't think she got yeah. enough screen time in the movies. I actually hmm. think Emma Watson did a decent job of, of some of the things. But like an example is she barely mentions the Harry of her caution to go to the Ministry of Magic because yeah, of what I what uh, Sir, yeah, yeah. Harry has seen. Mm -hmm. So that was such a huge part of the book. Hermione is so cautious. And even like some of her fighting scenes, even like her in the Ministry of Magic, mm -hmm. she was like capable in the Ministry of Magic. Mm -hmm. which with, And they just cut a lot of those scenes out. Right. So it wasn't Emma Watson necessarily. It was right. just like some of the stuff that they left out. 
which was very Hermione centric. Is this mm-hmm. was that an, like a cut version or is that like an extended version? Like, is there other mm-hmm. versions of these movies? That I we think just... there's like some small extended versions, mm-hmm. but the extended versions aren't significantly longer. Like, I don't okay. think. Mm. It's not like the Lord of the Rings where it's like an hour of difference. I didn't know there's an hour difference between. Pretty much. <laughs> About. Oh my! Yeah, they're long already, yeah. right? It's like huh? three hours. Yeah, yeah. Already? yeah, they're already long. They're already like three-hour movies, and then the extended editions make. But then it it's like, why couldn't they have done that Gosh. for this? No, I think so too. I wish they did that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because the fans wanted it. You know, if they split <laughs> yeah. like the, the series right now, that's what the fans really wanted. You can make so much money. I will give you whatever amount of money you want to for me to enjoy this Harry Potter experience watching them. <laughs> I also don't think um, Daniel Radcliffe very, did very good in this movie. Um, some mm-hmm. of his stuff was a little clunky. Um, like he had his, some good scenes. Yeah, I think he had some. One, I yeah, mm. I think he did did good in some of them. But you're right about Dumbledore. Yeah, which is okay, and this it, is shocking too. This like is no personality yeah. at all. It's just yep. like you could have had no a robot play this guy. Yeah. And that's where I still can't tell if it's the actor or the directors or something else. But miss the mark for sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's just it, not warm at all. Like yeah. you could ignore Harry, but still have like the charm and like warmth that he does in the book. Hmm. I feel like in a weird way, this is his best movie because in the books, he's a little cold, yes. but he doesn't have like the coldness to him still in the books. He still has like, like he still has a Dumbledore but it's charm. only to Harry though. So like yeah. that would be yeah. fine. Like you could ignore Harry, yeah. but just have him have i don't know like even face point. expressions or yeah. something he like seems you know even he was joking around the court case like mm-hmm. i don't know it just it was There's such a, way a to disconnect emanate, like yeah. who dumbledore is and he did he just missed that yeah. completely mm. there was a word as we were watching the movie i should have written it down i wrote nothing <laughs> down <laughs> that came to me and i it's i don't know I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's such a good point him. because in the in the books he's really just ignoring Harry, not really meeting eye contact, but he's still his like smart, winsome, charmful self. Mm-hmm. I, I think of the scene when um, he's in the office and he's like commanding other people to do things. He's like in control in that moment, but he still has like a very charming personality to him. Mm. And in the movie, I don't think that came across very much. He was just like ignoring everyone, like looking at portraits, saying "Do this, do this." I don't think he had like the charmingness to him still. Mm. That but again, was, yeah. There goes the, the cruise, cruise ship. ship <laughs> <laughs> it's going to become a byline of this podcast. The cruise is coming in. That whole scene, though, I feel like now that I'm really thinking the book versus it, it just missed a lot of things, though. Like mm. the whole portraits, like even the one where it was like, go check on Sirius and see if he's like mm-hmm. that whole Sirius is, um, is he there or not with Creature? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Unless I yeah, no, no, you're right. I, I, I don't think it was there. Creature at was all. barely in the movie at all. Yep. Yeah. It was like two scenes, right? Yeah. Maybe one. He just walks by mumbling. Mm hmm. But I think as a standalone, this is probably the first one that I could like, admi- like appreciate as a movie solo. Yeah. Trying yeah, yeah. to disconnect the book from it, maybe. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Good. Did, that, was there healthy. a reason for that? It just had a lot of action. Like there was action and like answers that I felt like were like a nice consistent Mm. flow. Mm. But I think you're going to have better movie watching experience if you disconnect it from the books. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your your expectations expectations and hopes are so high when you read the books because they're so good. The books are just so good. Yeah, but I've always been that way. I'll dissect any movie and I'm like Googling what happened in like the book and I need to (laughs) know. Yeah. Because I'm like, this isn't enough information. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep talking about this. Anyway, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks Welcome. for that's the, that's the podcast. That's, 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 that's all we're doing right now. Thanks for doing this. Welcome to the podcast. Oh. I'm John. Uh, Jen. Danny. <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. Wow, well, it's our first time. This, morning, this is our first time recording. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just a few quick things before we start this podcast. Um, We have a Patreon and we're starting to put more content on that. So we're doing two things on the Patreon. The first is we're going to just do um, some general questions. So we're going to do a question of the week for the entire group that we're going to kind of discuss a 
apart from the live streams and the podcast, and then we're going to post it on that. So if you're looking for kind of just more like fun content, we're going to post it on our Patreon. And then we're also going to do, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a director's commentary of each podcast episode. Because one thing that I found that's really hard is just holding my tongue through all this kind of stuff. And I would love to like kind of talk about some of the theories that Jen, Danny and Kristen have and just be able to talk about it unfiltered with all spoilers in it completely. So if you're really like looking to nerd out about the podcast with, uh, with me, just go check out our Patreon five bucks a month and, uh, you can get all that content. I think it's gonna be pretty fun, but, um, that's kind of what we're doing with our Patreon. As always go give us a rating, go give us a review. Also go check out our subreddit, r slash first time readers. Our email is first time readers at gmail.com. Our website, first time readers.com. Um, and all that other fun stuff. We're thinking about starting an Instagram and doing some more stuff on social media. I feel like we always kind of say this, but we're starting to kind of market the podcast a bit more. So stay in tuned for all that kind of stuff, but enjoy these, these, not these chapters, enjoy the movie podcast of order of the Phoenix. Um, okay. We're just going to kind of go through as we always do for the movie, like beginning to end mm. and, uh, whatever questions you guys have, let us know. But how'd you guys like the opening of this movie? Like when he's at the Dursleys. It's hard to even remember. I have mixed feelings. I'll say this. Dudley was cooler than I thought. Really? (laughs) A little bit. Like he was, he was definitely a dweebus, but also like. Dweebus. I don't even know what that means, but it was like. I just didn't think that he would be like, that's like a. Almost like a cliche, like a British street kid in the nineties. Like it just kind of felt like. I don't know. In my head, he had chains and an earring. And I'm yeah. like, his outfit I didn't was think he wild. was going to actually be like that way. I don't know. I pictured him still in like Argyle sweaters, but yeah. like trying to be a little more street. But then he's like actually forming this little gang with his people. I'm like, eh, I wouldn't want to be bullied by him anymore. <laughs> yeah. I still thought of him he as being huge. like a yeah. wimp. But then in this, I'm like, oh, he's actually like kind of big and he's got a bunch of people. But it felt over dramatic that Harry's just sitting on the swings out in the middle of a field or wherever it was. Yeah. Like, what is this? Some dystopian future. Um, it felt like a little off. Like this is what in his neighborhood. He's just hanging out like it felt it felt a little out of place. Maybe um, that was their, their attempt to show his grief. Maybe. There you go. Nice. Um, it was interesting, though. The he, whole opening. I actually thought Dudley does a great job of acting in this. Hmm. When he's like making fun of him, he's like, who's Cedric? Your boyfriend. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a good delivered line. Like, that's mm. something a bully would say. I feel like that was a really yeah. well-placed line, you know? <laughs> yep. Um. So I, I, I think his getup is a little weird. I think his outfit's a little weird. So weird. It's almost like a costume designer was didn't really know anything about what people like him bullies wear or something like that. And they were just trying as hard as they could. And they kind of got close with you're like, Oh, there's a few things that are off on that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's like wearing like three shirts and like one of them's like a basketball Jersey or like something. I don't know. It felt like (laughs) such a leap from the Dudley we left in the last movie that I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm trying to see if I have anything else from the intro. There's a few things that I didn't like about the intro. Um, one, and this is a byline of this movie that, that drives me crazy, is that they don't really respect the magic. I feel like the directors don't really understand how magic works, Ooh. and they don't understand the secrecy of the wizarding world. One thing that drives me crazy is when Dudley is insulting Harry, Harry gets up off the swing and immediately pulls out his wand and puts it to Dudley's neck. Mm, in front of in front yeah. of the, In front of all in front his of friends. Random kids. And they all laugh, and I'm sure they think Harry's crazy, but... That's that's wild to me. He's exposing the wizarding world to like other people. Like he like yeah. that's that's a like not necessarily a criminal offense, but but he's get honestly, out for that. almost no, though no. because yeah, yeah I mean, if he literally is magic. In, in a few scenes he goes to trial to get kicked out of Hogwarts because he used magic, right. and it was for good reason. But what he was about to use magic on Dudley, like you're right that they they're not respecting the secrecy. We don't get a good feel for that in whatever movie that was. Um, Wait, was that the second movie with the chamber? Yeah. Um, when we meet Dobby, same thing. He got a letter in the mail saying like, you know, whatever it was, uh, here's your warning. Mm-hmm. But it something about it, you don't get that same struggle that we have in Harry's head from the book where 
he's kind of like wishing he could use magic but knows he can't and kind of weighing that in each situation so it felt sloppy that he would just whip his wand out like mm. no big deal yeah I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I need direction in these thoughts. <laughs> yeah. One funny comment oh that God, we that all made sense. when we were watching the movie and uh, the Dementors came. I think one of you guys said, I forgot who, but the Dementors are getting to second base with Harry and Dudley. <laughs> like they're like <laughs> about to like make out with them. They're like getting, I said that. Didn't you say Maybe that? Maybe I said that. I just wrote that down. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. I don't know. No, yeah, somebody said it. I just, it. I just in, don't remember who. In yeah. quotes, I'm like, I should have just put a name by it. He doesn't remember what comes out of his <laughs> yeah, mouth. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny, I thought it was though. Jen, to be honest. But Yeah. <laughs> That's a Jen comment. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, you know what it means. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, the Dementors were portrayed pretty good in this, though. I think I thought they looked good. Uh, yeah. And like mm. everything getting cold, you start to see yeah, their breath and stuff. That was a cool <laughs> effect. <laughs> What'd you say? There's a whole sideshow going on right always. now. Always. There's always, always a sideshow. I'm always trying to avoid the mic and I can't. <laughs> it always <laughs> catches you. It, it me back. Uh, Sorry. I guess continue. It's fitting, yeah. Mm. <laughs> the Dementors, I thought, were portrayed really great. <laughs> yes, they were. And uh, <clears throat> that scene was pretty good. They came out of nowhere, but I thought that was like a, mm. the best way because it, it reminded me of like Twister when they're in the field and it gets all dark. I'm like, what is this? It was kind <laughs> yeah, of yeah. weird. And then I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Like I'm appreciating the right. transition of the scene because that's literally, it looked like a Twister was coming yeah. Yeah. in the field. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Like the aura around it, it was pretty cool. It's just the weather changes. Um, And then Umbridge is responsible for this. Yeah. And she's like, are you saying <clears throat> in the court case yep. that we were trying to send the Dementors there or something? It's interesting too that you that we're trying to to separate the books and the movies, but there's a part where I think that what they were trying to do is make the movie supplementary to the books because you in, if you just watch the movie, you don't know that she was the one that sent the Dementors. Well, I was going to say they find that out. never oh find that out. Okay. Goodness, you're but right. In the I court was shocked case, in the book yeah. when that happened. I was like, wait, yes. what? Yeah. With Jen mentioning that line where she's like, hem, hem, you wouldn't be suggesting that the ministry sent these Dementors. Yeah. If you read the books, you're like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Like, how evil. bold is that? Yeah. yeah. But oh just watching the movies, goodness. you don't know what the heck is going right. on. You're like, oh, that's terrible. Is it like little nods to the readers? Because it's like funny it is, that they yeah. put that in there mm. anyway. Yeah. I feel like is it has to be like, little nods to them, but it still bothers me. I'm like, give the movie going experience credit too. Like, They've got to have that kind of thing. in But there. you watched the movies before you read mm -hmm. the books and like you were fine with the storyline or were there pockets where you're like, I don't get this, but it doesn't matter. There was pockets, but I'm not like you. I just accept it. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> no, no, that's so true. I'm like, I don't get this. That's okay. And I'll just if something's on. missing, I just assume it's me. Because I'm more character driven. I'm more uh, like. Yeah, that's true. Mm. The, yeah, we're know. opposites. Yeah. yeah. With that. What were you saying, Danny? Oh, if something, if I miss something in a movie or something, I just assume it's me. I'm like, oh, oh there must same. have been something that like I no. I was not paying attention for. <laughs> yeah. Jen's like, like, I missed whatever. nothing. I, am like, <laughs> oh, I didn't I do it. The director the missed it. <laughs> Jen is watching this with her magnifying glass. Yeah, <laughs> that's they why it's that. fun. I watch things with my brother, and we're like the same. Like, you know, dissecting everything, yeah. and we're googling well, it. And like, it, it just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that disappointed me. Remember, my last wasn't in it. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah. The exactly. story line is I getting really I thought the really howler cut. was yeah. gonna be I know. that one because it's such a cool visual thing to do. There, there were so many things that are beautiful visual things in this book that they could have done. Mm. And, and what is that gonna add? Some, like five seconds. I know exactly. Mm. I know. Just like throw at. Mm. Then at least the connection. Mm. Excuse me. Between the ant and like there would be more of a history of a connection. It yeah. would justify why he's Genia. even there. Yeah. You want to know the reasoning why yeah. they take certain things out. Yeah. That because, do take like five seconds. Yeah. This is maybe my biggest qualm for the whole movie. I'm going to say that a lot. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I already said that like three times, right? <laughs> is uh, yeah. there's no Dumbledore download at the end of the movie. Yep. Like it's so short. And oh, I think yeah. the reason for it is because Dumbledore explains, remember my last, he explains, um, uh, creature's whole story, backstory. Yeah, yeah. Right. Creature's cut from the movie, really. He explains um, like the whole Neville thing, uh, which is my greatest problem I have with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest, it's greatest Neville. one. <laughs> you, like, moviegoers, yeah. 
He's nothing. And Ginny. No, exactly. Yeah. Ginny, Ginny is so lame. Ginny, Ginny doesn't even exist. I know. And I was like, what the heck? She was like so cool. the badass and or bad, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you rate things podcast. <laughs> She is like cool. She's a hot tamale. Yeah. And she's mm-hmm. not a hot tamale in the no, movies at all. not a hot tamale. I'm glad they at talk. least gave Neville one line like when all the kids are being held by the Death Veil arc thing. Mm. And he did say like, don't give it to them, Harry. But that was just like one of the many times he said it in the book and he mm-hmm. was fighting and like, yeah, we just, I know. he got gypped. He's, yeah. <laughs> Poor Neville. <laughs> We're going to go over some of their lines too. Oh, um. I in my head where we're like tracking through like we're about the trial but one other thing before that um when they were flying again the nuance is missed yeah in the book it was a big focus stay high above yeah. the clouds avoid detection oh, yeah. and the movie they're like oh, Woo! Right. By parliament <laughs> there's big ben yeah, they're, they're like brushing them, brushing the water giving yeah. high fives to it's like, like aladdin on the, the on the red carpet on the magic carpet and you guys here's my mindset oh it's so pretty <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it is, it, yeah, <laughs> i get what it. they're doing with the movies it's they're trying to make it visually beautiful like they can't just do clouds imagine it too like okay they've got some spell they can like make sure the pedestrians don't see him yeah. or moody's just erasing minds as they go all right fine like we can justify it but yeah but it just feels weird because in the He's books we know busy. that it was a different vibe yeah it was secrecy it was intense it was like all right we're gonna go on three everyone surround harry do yeah. this this is important make be careful and that was just not there like if that was like a two minute scene if you're gonna cut something i'm like there's no reason to have Okay, there's another weird part. Like, there, there's a lot of weird tension between Harry and Tonks in this movie. Like, if you look at the way hmm. Harry looks at Tonks sometimes when they're flying, they like have a little race off, but they look at each other and they're like, Ooh. I didn't catch that. <laughs> and then they go Aww. off and race. I'm like, well, he loves Tonks. Oh, what? Yeah, I'm a big Tonks fan. Like Tonks is my girl, but, <laughs> but I'm like, she's Harry, way better. She than never got a hot tamale. Yeah, though. exactly. Yeah. Huh? She didn't get a hot tamale. Did the hot tamale exist when she was kind of? She's always a hot tamale for me. Oh, respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> you better tell Floor. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, well Floor's taken now. Switched. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Floor. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, that means off limits? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Bill's girl now. <laughs> but why, why have a two minute flying scene? Like, they don't even need that. Uh, yeah, they could have used that, that time for other I know, stuff. Exactly. I mean, I like Cut the that. flying. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, but it's just. It would have even been cool to see Tonks cleaning up, like putting right. all of um, Harry's stuff into the suitcase. Yeah. Remember when she did yeah, that? Yeah, you're like, right. Like, that moment. Changed. Little things like that. At least that. they had yeah. my moment at the table. I know. I was like, that was pretty. Yeah. yeah. What moment was that? that? Was cool. Changing at, appearances, um, right? Yeah, when she was changing her faces. Oh, and yes, to the duck. Nose. and the, like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Which I think. When was that? A couple podcasts ago. I said it was at. What? The Weasley's place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The burrow. That's right. I said we it was at know. the burrow. <laughs> and I was like, that wasn't right. Yeah. <laughs> Had to correct myself. They anyway. didn't have, uh, in that whole scene, they didn't have Dung Fletcher uh, telling a story to oh Fred, George, gosh, and Ron right. and then cracking up, which is fine. One Dungus is like a part. little character in this, but hmm. the ear thing fun. was funny though when they had yeah. the, the magic. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that was in. that was and funny. Like, and then was it Crookshanks that like started yeah. playing with? They it? overheard a lot more off. rather yeah. than having it be a face to face conversation with Harry, like in uh, mm-hmm. the books. I don't even remember. Like, yeah, but it was again just keep the pace. It was forever. But again, it felt more secretive. It's like they're still keeping the kids out. They're kids. Adults are talking down here. And yeah, just a subtle difference, but because that conversation was a thirteen at the table conversation, and they just yeah. overheard that. Then on the extendable ears, I, for, I Fred and George are phenomenal in this movie too. They're maybe the two best ones. Mm. I love when they apparate downstairs when Molly is welcoming Harry, and then she goes, "What? You don't have to whip your wands <laughs> out! Not that you're of age, you don't have to whip your wands out for everything." <laughs> like they're apparating, they're doing everything. That it's is so, so good. great. I don't really remember their scene like leaving though. Was it that like? It it was a thing, but not as big as it was in the yeah. books. Yeah, because it, it wasn't like a week leading up to it. They, right, it was so fast. They just did it during uh, them taking OWLs. It was That's a where good, everything it was, fell over. Yeah, like, yeah. it was the good. Fireworks and visually, everything. it was yeah. cool. And then Flitwick's going, "Yes, that was <laughs> yes! such a great <laughs> part. That was funny." <laughs> But I think Fred and George were great in this. There's a few other scenes we'll talk about later, but um, 
I wrote that Dumbledore came into the trial like a bull and he was not calm at all. Yeah. That's the scene I hated with him. He's supposed oh, yeah. to yeah. glide across the floor. Yep. He's supposed to bring calm, but instead he came in, he was like all tense. He goes, witness so for clunky. the defense. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Yep. Chill. Mm. Um, I asked why the Wizen Gamut people were in different colors. No real reason. Yeah, nothing established. Right. Just kind of felt funny. But I liked it actually because it adds more depth to it. Like they're hinting at things but we don't understand them. It's just like, it's like a real organization. It has layers to it that are beyond Harry's understanding and ours. Uh, I wish Umbridge looked more like a toad. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, she does not not look like a toad to me. I want real toad. I want moles on her face. I want warts. I want a big old toad smile looking creepy thing. Um, But no toads. Yeah. Um, Her office was great though. Yeah. Yeah. Very weird, off-putting. With all the cats. Yeah, her office was great. All the little, like, uh, what are those called? I even like the scene where Teacups? the first Teacups. Harry Potter <laughs> detention. When you're he's writing. Use, and and she, like, yeah. gets she her, great her quills yeah, ready. And then he takes out, no, you're going to use mine. And she's just waiting to hear, like, yeah. his agony. Disgusting. She, yeah. yeah, even though she's not toad-like, she plays her really well yeah so true. like the sweetness of it where mm-hmm. she thinks she's so righteous and sweet and perfect and she's like enacting justice oh she's she's evil even with the centaur yeah yeah <laughs> now i'm like yeah. afraid i'm gonna say the wrong word centurion centurion <laughs> yep um i liked her reaction to that too because i thought that was pretty yeah hmm. it was shorter but it was like capturing that whole vibe there was like that pretty movie decent. moment where she goes, tell them I mean no harm. And Harry goes, sorry, Professor. Oh. I must not tell them. Oh, yeah, that was, that was so good. good. That was like oh, great a great yeah, line. good mo- movie Ooh. moment. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll yes. be that kind of thing. You're yes. like, ooh, <laughs> stick it to her. Yeah, that was that was good. And in the movies, yeah, she gets her wand snap, which is kind of satisfying. Her butt plug wonged. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that was interesting. <laughs> I guess Tonks. <laughs> Tonks must have a big Tonka Tonk. <laughs> Right? Oh, what? I don't know. <laughs> she must. Oh, well, he it. likes her. And oh, and that's why guy. she must. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> donk, donk. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one oh, thing was, was talking about that. So. Yeah, the uh, Ministry of Magic I thought looked really good. I like that. One thing that oh, frustrated yeah. me oh, was when you go in, cool. if, you've re- if you've read the books, when they're going into the trial, you see the fountain, you see this huge wizard, the centaur, centaurian, mm-hmm. the um, <laughs> goblin, and I forgot what else was there, a house elf. You see this fountain and it's huge and you're like, oh, I can't wait till this thing is reanimated later and yeah. they actually use it and they don't do that. I know. Why so they? bummed. You made it a big It could have been so cool that. visually. Like, I'm like, put the time and effort into a really cool CGI fight at the end. Well, not like yep. completely CGI, but like make the fight with Dumbledore and Voldemort look incredible. It did look pretty cool. It did look very cool. Yeah. But it but wasn't. What's from the book. I know because the and book it does it yep. perfectly. Mm-hmm. You're like. The visual elements of the book, just put it into a movie format and you're and good. And I love that Bellatrix was like pinned down. Yeah. Too. She got, she was just gone. I know. Yeah. Wait, how did that go? Why, she how like, did she leave? She just disappeared. She slides, she's like, I'm out of here. She slides to a chimney, one of the fireplaces yeah. and just disappears. Yeah. Wow. With like a little yeah, so strange. look on her face looking at Voldemort. Like, she was ooh. great. Right. <laughs> She is so good. Trying to get her man. Yeah, I know. Like, I wish she had more lines though too. Yeah. Hmm. Because you don't really get much. Yeah. I'm like, you picked such a great actress and you didn't even use her. I know. Yeah. To her potential. But, but she did have an impact still. Yeah. But she, I'm just saying. But not as better. much. I didn't like how much Mel likes her. I'm like, Mel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Mel was like, yeah. she's my favorite. She's so awesome. Yeah. Go, Mel. <laughs> yeah. like, You're Mel. sitting here watching this like, she is the worst. <laughs> we she hate awful. her. And then I was like, oh, this is how you guys must feel when I cheer for Umbridge. <laughs> Yes, there you go. Taste your own medicine. I was like, all right, taste my own medicine. <laughs> How does it taste? Bitter. Um, <laughs> one thing, uh, one thing I like in the trial scene too. There were a few good lines here that they. I I feel like they added good lines into the movie that weren't in the books, but that were like good themes of the books too. Because in the beginning, Arthur, when he's bringing Harry into the trial, says, "As the Muggles say, truth will out." Hmm. I feel like that's a good byline of the whole theme of the movie hmm. in the book. Like truth will out. Like 
by the end, the truth becomes known. And hmm. so will out. Yeah. The okay. truth will out. Okay. I don't, I don't say that as a muggle. I don't say truth will out. It really, must be a British it's, muggle Yeah, maybe thing. it's a British muggle phrase. The truth will come out. <laughs> yeah, the truth will, yeah, yeah. The truth will win out, I guess. The truth will come out. I don't like it that way, but yeah. yeah. It's a little it's weird. Just, it doesn't, yeah. Anyway. It doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> but I like that they set that up. Like if the you truth say is in the accent, maybe it, just, it sounds better. Truth will out. Yeah, it sounds better. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> I don't know. Good. I don't do a good, very, very, very good Arthur Weasley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, We talked about, yeah. Figgy at the trial. That's a little weird. We talked about that in the book of how she kind of lies. Which Didn't is they weird. show the map too of the Ministry of Magic first, right? It came up as like a map and then they went into, or am I imagining the books? something else? N- oh, nope. It was You're your thinking the of the book. map. Yeah. The, yep. yeah. <laughs> was which so is helpful. a great yeah, combining map. elements. I yeah, thought it was in so there. Helpful. I was like, that would have been cool. Like, you know, like just the map flowing. Oh, that would have been yeah. cool. And then it like shows them going in. That would have been great. Anyways. What did you guys think <laughs> of so many things? Okay, so there there are two questions I have. Um, what do you think about Sirius giving the photo to Harry rather than um, uh, it was Maddox. a totally different vibe, oh. yeah. different vibe, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. And with the different vibe, it was good. Yeah, yeah. but just very different from the book because Harry's not supposed to like the picture. It made him uncomfortable, yep. and it fit Moody Repulsed in the books. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's just ugh. so. Then we know that. So we see Sirius showing him the picture. And we're like, right. oh, but this is like hurting Harry. It's hard for yeah. him. Didn't Sirius get mad or am I making that yes, up? Yes. No, that's why I thought it was good because they connected Sirius yeah. and yeah. Harry again. Yeah. yeah. And like a rela- their relationship. Yep. Because right. Sirius right. understood his emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in the movie, it also kind of worked. It was like an endearing it thing. Them. It was like, here's a picture sure, and whatever. Sure. Um, but that lo- I didn't like how he turned back from a dog to a person like out in public. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. That was not good. Was it was weird. not the right time for it. I yeah. guess it worked though, because someone was watching and like on guard. It was also yeah. a little weird when he transformed back into a, a person. He put like this the fur coat over oh, him yeah. and he was like naked. You're like, hmm. I was like, Honestly, okay. I, was like, I never really thought coat? about yeah. that. <laughs> I know. It's like, like, where whose the coat heck is did that, that come from? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck is going on here? And if you're gonna plant a coat, plant an yeah. outfit. So you're that's not- another thing. That's not how hmm. the magic works. When the magic works with McGonagall, when she transforms, she has like it looks like she's wearing glasses as she's a cat. It says that in the first book. But when she transforms Ooh. and she's wearing glasses, I'm like, do that. Yeah. Make it look like Sirius has some kind of markings. Can he as carry a, his yeah, wand yeah. when he's in animal form? Probably. I think so. Because that's... <laughs> I yeah, I guess I you're know, right. You're right. Like he goes into an animal and then he's got a way like, of where like, could yeah. it shove it up. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Moving on. Because it's just there. weird. Because then he couldn't you Wait, make your own clothes? Wait, that's not really practical though, right? Yeah, the practicality, I'm just like confused. Because then you transform back into a human, you can be like, there's a clothing spell, right? Maybe. But where is your wand? That's a great point. Oh, he, it's somewhere. in a collar. He just <laughs> When he's human, yeah. he always carries a dog collar wand I holder. I love that. Yeah, pocket. Can yeah, it's like a kangaroo dog. Yeah, exactly. Kangaroo yeah, a little dog. pouch. Great they all got little pouch. pouches. Yeah. They keep all their belongings in. <laughs> what did you guys think about Voldemort being in the train station? That little vision that Harry had. Jen probably loved seeing him. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like a babe in a suit, too. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was like good. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it worked for the movie. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, it kind of establishes a little bit of the connection that they have. But with you each other. also, I feel like, was it just Harry like dreaming or was he yeah. actually there? So I thought that was kind of a good mysterious mm. pull. Mm-hmm. Maybe just, I guess it's just to remind you about Voldemort. Like, I, that's what I was like. Why is it there? Yeah, I didn't like it. No. Felt out of place. I thought when that happened that Harry's visions were going to be more visual tangible while he was awake mm. i thought that was gonna be a movie thing and I, but then it never came back it's not like he's walking around hogwarts and he keeps like turning the corner and seeing voldemort and then like i thought they were gonna tie that in at the end when voldemort's actually there he was gonna think it was one of those but then it was actually him so it, well, it felt a little out of place neat. that it was just one and done because if he was asleep And then all of a sudden he like jolts awake on the train. Then I'd be like, okay, you know, it was a dream. It was something like that. But I was like, is he seeing Voldemort? This feels weird. He wasn't like weird about it. He wasn't panicky. Was Voldemort actually there? I just was a little confused by it. It did set a creepy tone. Not bad in the movie. Mm -hmm. Again, one of those things that goes by. I don't really think much about it. Um, But 
bit of a strange choice. Yeah. I would have preferred it another way, like a dream at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, for sure. Something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they did cut a lot of the train scene too. Like there's nothing yeah. really in the train that that goes on. And that there's a, a chapter in the book on that, like what goes on in the train. That's where he meets Luna. But they meet Luna in the, with the Thestrals, which I actually thought was kind of effective too. Hmm. Like introducing these things a little earlier, which is just kind of the same as the books they introduced. Oh, those there. were cool. But yeah, I liked the they, they look looked. great. That's one of the crowning achievements of this movie. They they made those things look so good. Mm-hmm. They could have flubbed that really bad, but they think I think they they crushed it. Um, I would have loved to have seen them like riding something invisible though, like the ones I couldn't yeah, right? see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Thestrals yeah. were oh, yeah. riding something mm-hmm. invisible and afraid, and then Harry and Luna. That yep. would have been that would have been really cool. Because then you would have gotten like the terror that Ron feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like straddling this thing, and he has like there's nothing there. Um, but you feel something there, but you don't see it. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's just so weird. weird. So weird. I liked the baby Thestral when we see Luna and yeah. Harry out in the. Oh, that was cute. Oh, woods. Luna. She so was so good. So good. And I, this is something that I actually liked in the whole book. You kind of like Luna. She's a little weird, a little odd, but you really like her at the end. In the movie, I feel like they established liking Luna even earlier. Yeah. With that yeah. scene with Harry, I'm like, I actually thought that was effective because it's better. It's so good in the books because this is like the moment where Luna comes in the moment exactly where Harry needs her. Yeah. Absolute grief. And like Luna can comfort him. But in this moment, I think it's like, it's great. You get to know Luna earlier. You're mm-hmm. like, this girl is cool. Mm-hmm. Gives a little baby mm-hmm. some... Baby Thestral, some meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's good. Um, There was a few funny things in here, too, that I, I liked. Um, When Dumbledore is introducing a few things, he introduces um, Grubbly Plank to take over for Hagrid. And when he does that, one of my favorite little things is Snape just gives, Snape just goes like this. Like a lame little clap, like a <laughs> lazy clap. And then Trelawney is sitting there still eating. And she's got her big like bug eye glasses. And she's like looking out. Just oh, yeah. with fork in her mouth, like, <laughs> It's so good. I love that. Uh, and awesome. then there's another thing when they all get back to the. Um, well, I actually pause this because this is the first time I've seen it. Where um, when he gets in a fight with Seamus, 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 however he said it. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> Ron stops the fight and he goes, does anybody else have a problem with Harry? And then the Parvati <laughs> sisters, uh, Padma, right? Or no, uh, who is it? Padma and Pavardi? Patilia, yeah, Pavardi <laughs> nudges her sister, which her sister is in Ravenclaw, not in Gryffindor. But she nudges her sister as if she has a problem with Harry for the yep. Yule Ball thing, which I loved. I thought yeah. that was so good. good. A good thing. I'm like, those sisters did that on purpose. I'm like, that wasn't really in the script, but like, hey, you have a problem with Harry. You got to like play this up. And I love that. I thought that was so good. Such a good little part. Um, How do you guys like like the the classroom setups that they're going when they're like going on to going to classes when they're meeting umbridge um when they go to her class how did you like kind of like the middle of this movie i felt like it was a nice setup and flow mm-hmm. it looked mm-hmm. i think i was just i can't remember exactly but i thought i thought i remembered not liking the way the room of requirement yeah. like appeared or I might have said some, yeah, a comment while we were just watching walks it. By it. Yeah, yeah I, th- I didn't like that, but the room looked cool once they were in it. Like yeah. it was very effective as illustrating that. But I just didn't like the transition of like finding it because they took out Dobby. They took out yeah. like a lot of core mm-hmm. story that I don't know. Okay, and then yeah. being able to see. Well, I guess that was kind of neat. Like when they were trying to to catch the uh, Dumbledore's army. Um, the umbridge and the mm-hmm. her people and the door would just get like smaller so like they couldn't get yeah, in yeah, that or... was great they like burst it in it was like a little broom closet yeah so oh, yeah, that, that i thought that was kind of neat even though it's different but... yeah and then cho being the traitor i know cho's the oh. traitor that actually is a good touch yeah 
I feel like uh, it was fine because I don't really like, no one liked Cho, but I wish that they went on a little date, like a quick little blur so you could get a feel of their relationship and how it dwindles. You don't really get anything. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We don't get a thing. You just, they kiss and then it just dwindles. (laughs) Kiss then betrayal. Yeah, exactly. Classic Judas moment. Judas. (laughs) Little Judas moment there. But it was just weird because we never like actually liked her that much or maybe just because we knew it didn't end that well watching the movie i wasn't like oh yeah cho and harry this is so great um but in the book i think i rooted for her a little more and in the movie i never really rooted for her i wasn't like oh this is gonna be great um because there was no relationship yeah, there was nothing to go there's nothing yeah so it just it, it, it lacked just looks. Some, i was just gonna say oh. that, some looks and a kiss hmm. they, yeah. they but not liked... even the great looks yeah because no. radcliffe was just like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like that that expressions. Ron's facial expressions win every single oh, movie. His facial so expressions good. are so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Guys, we're Speak right here. Talk mics. to us. Sorry. There was a moment where uh, well, Hermione, that didn't want on the mic, Hermione yeah. and Ron were flirting, and Danny just goes, "Well, well, well." You can see they're flirting a lot more clear. <laughs> yeah, in this, in yeah. This movie, which not I think is subtle. funny. It's in your face. Yeah. I don't remember what they were doing. But the book is more subtle. Yeah, I guess it has yeah. to be though, right? Yeah, it's longer and drawn. Yeah, out. for sure. Like you get hints of it in the book. You're like, oh, these two, they like first. each other in some way. In the movies, it's a lot more explicit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Jay, Jay, you guys. Whatever makes it. <laughs> yeah, I know. We want to laugh, okay? <laughs> That's how I laugh. <laughs> Inappropriate jokes. Uh, yeah, I'm five. But we can laugh so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, it felt like the fire when Sirius was communicating with Harry, it was different now than it was before. Yeah. Before he was like in the embers and now he was just like a yeah, holographic like a flame, face. Yeah. Like a little flame. Oh, there. really? I don't um, remember the difference between the two yeah. movies. And for whatever reason, when he said Voldemort's name, I was like, oh, whoa. I kind of forgot that Sirius was saying Voldemort's name as well. Um, so I thought that was good. Yeah, but Umbridge doesn't him. interrupt him during that scene either like she did in the book hmm. yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah he just disappears because someone's coming yeah but it wasn't like umbridge oh, yeah, is like right. guarding like watching yep. everything which would have been great because it would have shown another side of how annoying she was yeah yeah I know. and yep. controlling yeah we'll yeah we'll get to that scene too because they they went to her office mainly because they were trying to find a way to get to the ministry it wasn't there they were checking on serious they completely like rewrote yeah. that end scene too Someone just... And there was no mirror at all. Yeah, oh, I know. No mirror? At the end. Oh, Sirius. oh, the gift from Sirius. That makes yeah. me so sad. I know, well, I, then so I'm like, does that mean it doesn't come back into play later? Or it's just another thing they cut from yeah. the books when they make the movies? Yeah. But yeah, because you've always said that there's things that they like cut, so like later mm. on it can't like yeah. come back up. So I'm curious. Yeah, so like, there were the things that we again. Yeah, this is my problem with Neville's characterization in the books is he's just Dobby. They they take Dobby's roles yeah, and they make right. Neville do them, and that happened hmm. in the last two movies. And I'm like, oh, interesting. We now know Neville is like a pretty important part of this movie or important part of the plot. Hmm. And if he gets more important later, then what are they going to do with it? Like they can't just reintroduce him as like this important character because they've missed half of his important stuff. They missed his whole backstory. So unless they do that in a some flashback. condensed version yeah. <laughs> yep. in like the next two movies, you don't wow, get anything. His whole backstory. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I do is like the worst that he found the room of requirement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the worst thing. <laughs> but it, it stinks that they have to choose between two characters we like. Yeah. Dobby and Neville. We exactly. want them both to I get know, some spotlight. Exactly. I know. Someone. Okay. This is really cool. I didn't know this. Um, no, you're good. This is how Luna was cast. Ooh. She went to a book signing. She was battling anorexia. Mm-hmm. And at the book signing, she asked JK if she can be cast as Luna. And JK told her if she beats anorexia, she can play Luna, which is someone said that's the condensed version. But no way. How cool is that? What and in she the is world? a perfect Luna. I yeah, feel she like is. she nails that role mm-hmm. so well. So how cool! Oh is my that? goodness, I like that. Um, there's something so pure about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know about using, you know, acting roles as motivation to yeah. beat disorders, <laughs> but um, but there's something pure about the idea that she read the books, liked the books, and connected with a character. Yeah. And wanted to play that character yeah. as opposed to an actor who's 
doing a job or an agent sends something over and you should try out for this and make money this. Like, I like that she saw the character and thought I could do that yeah. and do it well. Same. Yeah. I really like that. I think that's pretty mm. good. I know other people, like there were other, uh, I think <clears throat> Percy, I think that I heard the story that Percy, the guy who plays Percy wanted to play Ron, I want to say. Hmm. Wow, but he outside. realized he was a little too old, so he just wanted to play any of the Weasleys, and I think he got cast as Percy. Hmm. Oh. So they they were all kind of going for different things. I think that's I think that's what the story was. Or maybe he wanted to play Bill or something like that. One of the cool brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, you're not cool enough. Yeah. How will you play the annoying <laughs> yeah. brother? Everyone you look hates. like a nerd. <laughs> yeah. We don't like you as a casting. Oh, this is perfect. Let's make you as Percy because we don't like, like no, you. He looks oh, like Percy. And he looks know, like Percy. Percy. <laughs> Sorry, dude. So well. Well. Yeah, he, he's like, I want to have long hair and <laughs> dragon skin boots. I want to be cool. Oh, man. <laughs> I do have to say, one of my favorite transitions in any movie of all time not just the harry potter movies is when luna has this little chunk of meat she throws it oh, yeah. to the thestral the thestral goes and is <laughs> chomping on the meat and all of a sudden the next scene you get is ron digging into that a sausage a going fantastic <laughs> <laughs> he's like going out of hell that was good that was really good for him though because it's such a like, perfect one he just feed him just like <laughs> a mess <laughs> um i liked in hogshead when they were getting dumbledore's army started i thought um harry's acting it seemed very like earnest it seemed yeah it, it was authentic he he really felt humble to me in that moment um and there were times watching movies where he didn't feel so humble um yeah. but that really it felt to me like he was humble he's like this isn't me. This is pure chance. This is the people around me. This is luck. This is like, this is bigger than, than just us. This is just good versus evil. He was like pleading with the people a little bit. Um, and I, I like that scene. I thought it, it felt very, uh, very real, very human. Yeah. Kind of agree. I think he did pretty, pretty good in that one. Um, that whole scene, I, 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 I mean, they cut some things that were, I guess, cuttable. Like them, they were all signing that little piece of parchment, but oh, he yeah. didn't really explain any of that kind of stuff, which is oh, they, they cut right. Marietta. So that doesn't make, oh, right. I mean, you're like right. if they're you're cutting right. all that stuff, it's almost like a worth it to cut that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you kind of want, that's where Hermione is shining in this book. Yeah. And she doesn't shine yeah. so much in the movie. Yep. She's brilliant. Hermione is so brilliant in this because she's coming up with stuff that is like, she comes up with the order or Dumbledore's army. She comes up with the way to catch the snitch. She comes up with like, Half the important stuff in this book. The article written for the exactly, Quibbler. Exactly, exactly. Right, you, right. you get that completely yep. the, uh, all And cut. she was right in the end to say, yep. let's not go to the ministry. I know. And you don't get wow, almost any of that kind of stuff. Any of that, you're yeah. right. So that's why it was hard. I guess Emma Watson did as best as she could, but... Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of the montages in this? There were two montages of, of Umbridge, pretty much. Hmm. And they were doing the... One was her, like cleaning up the school and doing some of the um educational decrees <laughs> that um, was at least funny yeah yeah all the yeah. decrees on the wall i mentioned to you guys when she walks by those guys with their shirts untucked and she tucks them in <laughs> i thought it was for the <laughs> longest time when i watched that movie i thought she was pinching their butts <laughs> you're like why is she doing um, this because butts See? <laughs> guys butts Classic. so i thought she walked by them and like pinched their butts like as a cute little thing like oh these guys are cute which would be like you know probably sexual harassment I was say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> wouldn't be a teacher anymore yep <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, I also love in that montage where um, she's in Snape's class and she says something to Snape um, about uh, the, the defense, of def defense against the dark earth. She's like, but you weren't selected. And Snape goes, obviously. <laughs> And after she leaves, he takes a notebook and just hits Ron over the head with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually really like that. Mm. I think Poor that was Ron. so great. <laughs> Uh, the movie also makes you hate Filch, Ugh. but he's like the comedic element to it, which is yep. good because in the books, he's not the comedic. He's just dark. Mm -hmm. Filch is just weird in the books. And I feel like mm. they did a good job of flipping him and making him like comedic in like, the, in the yeah. movies. Yep. Even just his run. Yeah, I know. Like high knees. It's as he's so like, good. <laughs> Emma Thompson is so good in this movie, though. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um as Trelawney in that whole scene where she's getting sacked 
Oh, yeah. That's like a, almost one of the mo- the emotional thrusts mm. of this movie too, where she's about to get sacked and she's like, Hogwarts is my ho- home. But then you don't even understand why. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So that, mm. I don't know mm, if yeah. I just watched the movie. Yeah. I feel like, I just don't, I guess it's so hard because I can't disconnect the two, but I'm like, I feel mm-hmm. like I wouldn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And I would be annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just don't, yeah, you don't get the small details. Because again, this movie is paced quick. So like, I was trying to think of that too when I was watching this. It was, I had never read the books, what I understand some of the stuff that's going on. And I don't know if I would, but it just kind of does go over your head. You're like, oh yeah, maybe she's a bad teacher. So that's why she's getting sacked or she's, yeah. you know, but you don't really understand why. Yeah, I think I just thought like Umbridge sucks. So yeah, she's just getting rid of people. But then yeah. you kind of... Mm. Do we know that it's her in the prophecy later on? That's what I was like. No. You don't really know it nope. was her. You don't know anything with the prophecy. Oh, yeah. That's what, yeah. Oh, because it didn't even do it. It Harry, broke. Yeah, Harry sees it. And you can't it in the hear thing. anything. Or, you, only get, you only get, literally, you only get the part that Harry or that Voldemort heard. It was the one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches. He will have power the Dark Lord knows not, and neither can live while the other survives. That's pretty much all that Voldemort heard. Mm. He, he didn't. There was nothing about Neville in there, which obviously, or there was nothing about when the kid was born. Mm. Um, he'll ha- yeah, it was an incomplete prophecy. But mm. but we don't know Trelawney. Yeah, you don't know Trelawney, movie, did right? it? Yep. That's stupid. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. It's so annoying. Because then maybe at least you could have that connection. Yeah. Like yeah. okay, she was sad, and like this was her home, and then you see like the importance of her, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It she, wasn't her face didn't pop up or anything. Nothing. Yeah. I can't remember. So I'm nope. like visualizing the book and like. Yep. <laughs> right. Right. And this is a maybe this is a book question. Do you think that the reason that Dumbledore like why did Dumbledore hire Trelawney? Is that evident to you guys? It's a protector. Yeah. For sure. Oh, thank. <laughs> and you don't get that in the movies. Dumbledore doesn't seem like he's a mastermind. He just seems like he hires terrible teachers because you don't know that Mm. Trelawney is the one that gave that prophecy. Mm. So you're like, Dumbledore just brought like this weird, terrible lady who doesn't know what she's doing onto staff. You're like, he just seems careless. He just, but in the books, he's doing this calculated. Mm. He's like protecting her from, from really from Voldemort, which is noble and admirable and actually really cool that he's mm-hmm. that he's doing that even though he thinks this is like a stupid subject even though he, he doesn't was gonna want to cancel it, it. Yeah, he was gonna he was cancel gonna the subject the class. yeah he's doing this to protect someone which i think is really cool and students are subjected to take this class now oh, which yeah. sucks but <laughs> you put up with it for protection of people i think it's cool it's an elective though right those don't matter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly also i hate when dumbledore leaves after that sacking scene and he goes don't you all have studying to do like, what, who the heck is this person? Not that's, that's, not not Wait, what that's not my that? Dumbledore. What scene when that? he saves Trelawney, when Trelawney's about oh, to be sacked, yeah, okay, and he, okay. he's leaving, and Harry's here, he's like, Professor Dumbledore, Professor Dumbledore, and he leaves, and he goes, Don't you all have studying to do? And he just walks up. Come on, are you kidding? Or even if he, he said that remember. with like a twinkle in his eye and a smirk, that'd right. be fine. Yeah, it'd right. pass. Seriously, yep. mm-hmm. just the way you deliver that no line is terrible. It's awful. Who gave him tips on this character is what I'd like to know. They failed miserably. Yeah. I do not know. And J.K. Rowling didn't say anything. Like, she couldn't be like, no, you're getting him all wrong. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, that makes me kind of angry. I know. I hope she's more involved in this next one where she kind of, kind of like micromanage some of the stuff or just pick better actors to do this stuff. Or at least she'd be on set and be like, no, that's not portraying. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm saying I don't know if we're at the part where he like uh, with Mr. Weasley getting attacked, but that's my next note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I said Harry's anger in Dumbledore's office felt a little out of place um, when Mr. Weasley got attacked. I don't remember exactly why, but I feel like he was frustrated that Dumbledore wasn't looking at him and he yelled at him like, "Look at me!" Really intense. Yeah, and I was like, oh, "Whoa!" Yeah. Like I get it, but it still felt a little too extreme. Um. I was like defensive of Dumbledore in that moment. Yeah. But again, in the movie, Dumbledore is much more abrasive. So maybe in the movie, it makes sense where Harry's like, you're being legit rude right now. Like shape up. Yeah. 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 Seriously. That was, 
there's a few parts of that scene that I just didn't like. That that where he loses his cool there. I mean, Harry kind of does lose his cool in certain parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. And in the books, obviously. But I just don't think he nailed like Harry's angst and anger very well. Yeah, because mm. you're not getting it in between. Yeah, you need exactly. those fillers yep. yeah. to build up to that. Because if you're exploding, you have to have a build up. Yeah. There's a reason why yeah. you're yep. not getting that And in the filler. movies, like, yeah, he, mm-hmm. he goes off on people and like Hermione has to back him down. He's like, look, but there's one weird scene in the beginning where um, Malfoy walks past him and he says, I forget exactly what the line is. Um, and Harry lashes out at him and just goes stay away from me and ron literally asks like, like hold him back and ron's looking at me he's like it's just malfoy you're oh, like yeah. where where did that come from hmm. for harry like yeah maybe he maybe is angry but you don't get any of the lead up you're that you're like yeah. this justifies that he just seems like angry all the time but it's not like the good anger that he has in the books i think not good anger but not the right anger i think <laughs> but there's even like when when he's going into uh um, Dumbledore's office there's a one scene that I was really bummed they missed where McGonagall like screens Harry and she says okay I believe you let's go to the headmaster they didn't have that scene which I missed I was like that is huge for Harry because someone believes him mm-hmm. and that like leads him on to really like thinking that he's right in a lot of the stuff that's what leads him to the end of the movie on thinking he's right in this vision mm-hmm. like McGonagall kind of believes me with this stuff so I was right about this so I have to be right about this other one you don't mm. get that, which I think was a little mm. bum- bummer to me. Right the before whole, that. like scene in the hospital with Arthur Weasley too, though. I know Harry didn't even go. Didn't go to the hospital. But like, did you actually know that he did anything, Harry? Like, it barely yeah. said that he like saved Arthur's. Well, they did. Um, One of the portraits came back. to Harry. I think at some point later. Yeah. When they're in Twelve Grimald, it's like. You know, thanks to Harry, I'm here or something, right? Yeah. But all oh, St. Mungo's was skipped, certainly. Mm-hmm. And then he just, I think Harry got whisked off to do occlumency with Snape right from Dumbledore's office or something. That could have been like a five minute scene, right? Yeah. You know, meet yeah. Neville's parents. Right. I know. Mm-hmm. But they never did any background. Oh, yeah. Neville, that would have been great because so that's why it's such a good combo. Some Mr. Weasley stuff, yep. some family moments, yeah. and some actual sorrow, some pain. And then, um, yeah, meeting Neville's parents because the only backstory that you got on neville is neville looking at that picture and going you know 16 years ago or something my bellatrix lestrange tortured my parents oh he we goes, do I'm, get that. I'm really proud of them but hmm. he, like this is the whole idea of when in writing show don't tell in the movie neville says i'm still really proud of him and you're like oh that's that's you know that's a good line in the books he saves a gum wrapper right and you're like that's the moment right there. Hmm. Show me that he's hmm. proud of his parents. And that's the exact moment that you get. His mom hands him a gum wrapper and he takes it and he puts it in his pocket that he's going to save it for oh, later. Oh, I get probably it. Like, a whole show, not these. tell. Yeah. yeah. That makes Whereas, sense. Whereas like that shows his pride in his parents that he's not ashamed of his parents, that he loves his parents still so much rather than him just saying that. Hmm. And I think that's more effective. I think that's way more effective. Yeah, you're right. Um, but that's writing. So yeah. I guess a visual might be a little different. I loved... I think this movie, one thing this movie nails is flirtation, like we talked about before. But Ooh. in the uh, in the um, department of, no, not department, in the, I can't think of it, room of requirement, right before they're about, everyone's about to leave, Cho is just kind of hanging out in the back, <laughs> and Ron and Hermione go, they like look at each other in like a little flirtatious way, and they look at Harry, they go, see you, see you in the common room, Harry, and they both leave, <laughs> and they kiss, and then when they come back, their whole conversation, Harry's like, it was wet, how was the kiss? It was wet. And then Hermione, that's her best <laughs> delivered line, when she's like, she must be feeling this and this and this, and then Ron goes, one person can't feel all that, they'd explode. Uh, <laughs> and she goes, just because you have the emotional range of a teaspoon, doesn't that mean all the rest of us do or something? Mm. And they yeah, all giggle and laugh good. at that. I thought that was one of the best scenes in yeah, the movie. Yeah, I, I love good. that they all laughed at yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, that was really cute and like a, yeah. a sign of camaraderie and just yeah. like letting loose for a second. Yes, that poking was fun, really but all yeah. in teasing and yeah. Yeah. After the um, after the whole scene that um, Mr. Weasley gets better, how did you like the scene when they're going back to Hogwarts? Like when they when Sirius and Harry are in the family tree room, all that kind of stuff. Can I backtrack? Yes. One? Like same scene, but like 
Do we even, did we know it was a snake that attacked Arthur Weasley? Yeah. Barely. I don't know. It was hinted at because, yes, yes, I think we did. Because we're seeing from the snake's perspective, Harry was, and you feel the slithering side to side. And I think there was something reflective. Oh, the like snake a mirror looked or a at shadow? something yeah, and saw Harry, itself yeah, yeah. briefly. It looks in like a the mirror in one of the Department of Mysteries. Okay, or yeah, because Harry did know, and okay. then at Mister Weasley, it was like multiple strikes. Yeah. Okay. So you you got the feeling. I think you hear some like hissing or something, but it, it was it was subtle. It wasn't anything too crazy, hmm. and it was weird. It never got explained properly either. In fact, it still hasn't. Why was he a snake? The genie. We don't even know who that is, though, do we? From only movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do because Najini still slithered by Frank. But at the you beginning know of, her name and everything. I don't. You know uh, what? I Voldemort think we says maybe it, heard her name once. Um, Voldemort says it once or twice. Connection between in the movie. snakes and Voldemort. Barely. Well, we, we still don't know that. Yeah. That is still weird to me. Like why Harry was seeing be, from Najini's eyes, unless Voldemort can turn into a snake sometimes, but I don't think so. I don't. Well, also, we don't know mm. that Voldemort, like, survived by going through different, like, yeah, you're snakes, right. too. Did that ever yep. come up? No, not in the movie. Well, maybe in the um, graveyard, he might have mentioned it, like, in a line of, in passing. Like, and Wormtail um, rescued me when I was jumping around from creature to creature. Like, he might have made some offhanded comment, but I can't remember. I don't think so, but maybe. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, either way, if it's not said at all, then... We're just kind of left filling I guess you in those just details. Associate a snake yeah. with that. It's yeah. Like weird. But yeah, I mean, come to think of it, that I just feel like we haven't really gotten an answer on that yet. And another thing that I couldn't remember if it was said directly in the book, um, but again, the subtlety is missing in the movies. It was said so outright in this scene with the family tree. Sirius said he ran away from his parents when he was sixteen and stayed with the Potters. Yeah. And I'm like, that's interesting. So at some point between. 16 and 21 in that five year span we don't know but the potter's parents uh are gone yeah killed run away i don't know but now it, it just brought up the idea of wow Sirius ran away from home and stayed with harry's grandparents and we don't even know who they are but he lived with the potters for years then it seems or at least for a while um so that that story gets a little deeper and it just hmm. makes you wonder, like, what happened there? Hmm. And what was the moment where he decided to run away? And is that the same moment that things happened with Snape that, you know, things were going on in mm. the streaking shack or whatever else? So another hint that I think we're going to find out more about that. That backstory there. Yeah, it's interesting that why, why they even put some of those lines in there. I think he delivers lines. Well, I actually think Sirius does a good job of delivering some of those lines. Like even when he says, or Harry asks him, where did you go? And he goes, your dad's. I feel like that single line is actually really mm. good. And you're like, oh, wow, there's something there's something behind there that you just don't know of yet. Even when he says like the world isn't split into good people and death eaters, I thought he delivered that line yeah. really well. I thought that was really good. He seems much more mature in the yeah. movies. Yeah, I, I believe that. What? You when he said <laughs> yeah, that, that is I was your like, thing. Jen. You're like, you're either good or you're a death <laughs> <Yeah>. eater. <laughs> Jen's like, no, you're wrong, Sirius. You're priming to be. Which is stupid. This is another part that it drives me crazy that a lot of people make comments of in this movie. Sirius says the world isn't split into good people and death eaters. And then literally, death eaters, they apparate and their smoke is black, and the good people apparate and their smoke <sighs> is white. You're like, okay. <laughs> what oh is my. this? In the end of the movie, when the Order of the Phoenix oh comes goodness. in, they all operate as like white smoke, and you're like, that "What the heck is going on here?" Catch them? Yeah. Yep. Wow. One thing that even you mentioned, Sirius seems more mature <laughs> in the movies, which is weird for two reasons. I think one is that you don't obviously you don't get his angst in the movies. Really, in the movie, in the books, he's so much more angsty and so much more yeah. like mm -hmm. like mad that. And mad and grumpy that he's like stuck in the house. He's restless. Yeah. He's just like yeah. Which always moving. That makes you understand almost why he goes out of the house to rescue Harry. Mm. I mean, he would still do it even if he wasn't feeling that. But I actually thought the movie did well because I feel like it delivered. I don't think the end did this very well, but it could have set it up where Sirius's death is almost more painful because he's like a father figure and because he's yeah. mature in the movie. Right. Mm -hmm. So like 
oh, Harry like lost his father figure. Mm. Right. Maybe that's why I'm, I was more connected to Sirius. Yeah. No, you're right. If I had just movie, watched the movies, I would have been much more connected. Yeah. He's a much yeah. more, sorry, book serious, much more respectable, <laughs> mature is, father figure. Yeah. Mm. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, Gary Oldman. Gold, Gary Oldman. <laughs> Gary Oldman. Old man. I mean, he does seem more like an old man, too. I'm like, yeah, how old is yeah. he supposed to be? Like, He does a good yeah. serious, though. I don't think they did justice with the fighting scene, though. Like, his death and I everything. Know. Oh, yeah. It was no, too I know. That was so dumb. Because mm-hmm. she vowed a cadaver is him. And he still has, like, a look on his face. That's, again, the thing they don't respect the magic. They don't understand what's going on. Bellatrix literally uses a killing curse on Sirius and Sirius like looks over almost like he's not dead mm. yet. And then he falls into the veil. I guess why they did that is they have to like confirm up a bit that he's dead, but then you just get Harry's grief. It's not like, Oh, he's going to come back. I guess they can't play into that that much in the movies, mm. uh, but they don't respect the magic. You know, that whole scene, yep. how he died was just stupid. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll ask it you. was so final. I know. I know. Yeah. Ugh. Which in the books, it's not it's Harry. Not he's at like, all. oh, he's just going to Did appear. he say that line mm-hmm. too? Did Sirius say that line? Like, is that the best you got? No, because he wasn't even fighting Bellatrix. He was fighting yeah. Malfoy. Yep. And then Bellatrix so they, just cast a spell. like popped And another and reason to feel more like sorry for him because it was like a cheap shot from somewhere else. Yeah. But in the books, it's a one-on-one fight and it was like almost like his arrogance got in the way of him I know. Focusing. And that's why maybe, you're right, maybe I would have liked the version of the movie series mm. then in the book. Cause I'm like, you just kind of, not that he did it to himself. Cause obviously not really, but like his arrogance and yeah. pride and everything yeah. was a lot higher mm. in the book. Mm-hmm. And that bothers, I don't yeah. like that character right. trait. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that's why I like him less in mm-hmm. the book. No, that makes sense. There's a, yeah, there's a line that I want to talk about. That's really controversial. That that some people actually love, some people don't. I was going to say that. We're going to talk but about we'll, we'll get there <laughs> in, a, in a bit. Not right now. Um, there's a, a there's one thing that I wanted to mention that was really funny when we were watching it. <laughs> okay, so there's a, there's actually a part that I like where Phil... <laughs> oh, you actually like something? <laughs> is taking the paintings off the wall and like tilting the people out of the portraits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's a great... I feel like Umbridge would do that. She would clean the castle up like that take all the paintings off and the paintings seem very Dumbledore like, but there was a funny part when we were watching the movies where <laughs> you, Kristen just go when during that scene, you just say he needs to get laid. <laughs> uh, no, isn't then, that about Umbridge? Or yeah, you said uh, Umbridge. You said she just needs to get laid, and then I said I thought you meant Filch for a second, and then Danny goes two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was dying when I read that. That was so funny. I'm so glad you said that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were thinking it, Jen. We all know you were thinking no, it. Just no. came out. <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> Her out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Get some of that intensity out. She could relax a little bit. And yeah, the hammer for like all those. Yeah. yeah, yeah decrees. Like, uh, yes. There were so many decrees. In the book, it was three, I think. Maybe four. <laughs> it was a little absurd. But yeah. it made it the wall fun, was though. just filled with them. And then it was fun because when Fred and George leave, they like yeah. fly oh, yeah, them all was off good the too. thing. That was, kind that was good. A nice yeah. visual. What do you think of um, Harry learning occlumency, though? Do you think it was well done? Do you think it was um, kind of rushed in the movies? What do you think? Is it not memorable? Always rushed. Yeah. No, I, it was memorable because Snape is so memorable to me. Mm. He He's such a commanding presence that um, I feel like that scene still felt big. I kind of liked that Harry got into Snape's mind rather than using um, the Pensieve. Because the Pensieve felt like uh, Harry crossing the line, but Harry just fighting back against Snape felt maybe not true to the story, but I liked seeing it because it made Harry seem more powerful. Yeah. Like he's naturally good at this stuff. Um, he is accidentally reading Snape's thoughts. Um, but then the scene was so rushed in Snape's mind, we didn't really understand it as much. It, it wasn't like a slow pace like the Pensieve was in the yeah. books. It was just a couple flashes of different things. Lily wasn't even in there. So it was a little weird. Because even how he invades Snape's mind is a little weird. 
He doesn't do it through the pensive. He does it through Protego. Which was weird. So Protego is a shield, right? Yeah. So like, it bounces the person's spell back I guess, at them. yeah. But it felt weird that Snape casts legitimacy, right? Mm -hmm. And then it hits him, but Harry gets access to it. Yeah. It felt like a... Magic doesn't work like that. It's just the yeah, magic again, doesn't work. Yeah, again, not respecting the magic, yeah. maybe. I didn't think that's how it worked. Um, <laughs> respect the magic. Respect the magic, Jen. Um, <laughs> how many times I've watched these movies, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to play uh, again, like Harry just like le like letting the movie take me yeah. on a journey. It like worked. I was okay with it. Yeah, there is a part where it, it mischaracterizes Harry a little bit though, because he mm. is curious and would do that stuff like yes. he did in, in other movies. Yeah. So. Mm. But also, it doesn't. It messes up the um, why Snape's so angry at him too. Yes. Like Harry mm -hmm. crossed the line to oh, yeah, see yeah. these yep. secret, yes. um, you know, memories, and he purposely did that. And then Harry goes and watches them. So now we know why he would be so angry that he doesn't want to teach him anymore. Whereas mm -hmm. in this version of the movie, you don't really understand why he's so angry at mm -hmm. him because that's great that you're able to do a spell and like you know, bounce it back to him. So I feel like you shouldn't be as angry, yeah. like, oops, like you did a good thing in defense against my spell. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah, you're right. And Such we never even difference. saw Snape hide any of his thoughts, yeah. right? So there's none of yeah. that mystery like yeah, in the yeah. books where Snape is literally hiding his thoughts in the Pensieve. He does not want Harry to see these. And Harry knows that there's something he's hiding. And even none of that but, in the movie. But I, I also did like the fact that they're like, you have to learn this now and go yeah. now. I thought yep. the rushing of that meant it was mm. very important. This mm. is something serious yeah. that you have to take um, control over like right now. Yeah, like Harry's and it's sweat and he just goes and he has to learn. Like he's exhausted, but he has to learn this. It showed a lot of urgency. But even Snape's worst memory is not the full memory. Mm. It was just like a quick little bit of his bullying. It was so fast. I know. Even like the, because it, it was short clips, but it, it like blurred through it. Yeah. Like at least mm -hmm. if you're going to yeah. do like these short clips, have it go a little I know. slower. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Seriously. Like Lily wasn't in it, which is devastating because you really haven't seen Lily at all in the movies. And you don't really see her that much in the books, but like any chance that you get to see Lily mm -hmm. and Harry's interaction with Lily is like, because Lily is like the cool person in that memory. And Harry kind of loves that and he doesn't like his dad so much after that, which is a little funny, but yeah, I don't know. Well, you miss all that too. Remember when he's questioning Sirius and Lupin about his dad and mm -hmm. yeah, the whole teenage years and yep. explaining that. Yeah. Not that that's super important, but it helps build the character, even yeah. though I don't care about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I care a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Come on, admit it. We'll um, see. yeah, Fred and George, um, their exit I thought was really good, but I, th I actually loved one of the reasons for their exit too, because this gives Fred and George like a little sympathy when they're like consoling that kid who's crying because the back of his hand hurts. Oh yeah. I was like, That's a cool scene. I feel like Fred yep. and George would kind of do that in real life too. Yeah. Like it, it gives them a little bit of, um, like sympathy and pity for other people mm. rather than just these businessmen that are like brilliant. You know? You're right. I actually really like that. And then they go, you know what, Fred? I think it's time to take our uh, talents. What is he? What is the exact line? I always butcher lines, but he's like, <laughs> well, you know of, better than yeah, us. Outside, I was gonna of, say, uh, know outside of Hogwarts. And then they, mm. that's when they decide to leave, which I kind of like. I thought that was a well executed scene. Yeah. And we talked about Flitwick, his little, yes, it's really <laughs> cute. Um, and then Umbridge. So this is like, how do you guys like the, the part where they're escaping? Like Umbridge, they're going to Umbridge's office. The whole gang comes, they see Grop, all that kind of stuff. Grop was so cute. <laughs> yeah. He was a lot cuter he's like than a I thought Honestly, he was yeah, you're be. right. His animation is a little weird, but he's like a big baby. He is like yeah. a big yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, hmm. Uh, the scene was pretty decent for what it was. I mm -hmm. know it was different, obviously. But then the Thestrals just coming out of nowhere was weird. Yeah. Because the blood was from Grop on Harry and yep. Hermione. And then the line, word that you get is Luna Luna goes, we'll take Thestrals, of course. And then the next scene is them on all on Thestrals. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, I guess you got to cut it something a little bit. Yep. But, you know, you just want it how it is in the movies or how it is in the yep, books. Yeah, exactly. I like that 
Ron and Grop both like Hermione. Yeah. And there was that like you funny tension between <laughs> them. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. like, it's kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cute. Ron <laughs> runs and like hit, hits him over with a stick and then the stick just instantly breaks oh, or something yeah. like that. Yep. It's so cute. There was one scene that I really liked. Again, Imelda Staunton, who plays Umbridge, I think does really good in a few different scenes, but one in particular, maybe one of her best, one of my favorites is when she literally slaps Harry because he Harry's like lying to her and she slaps him when she finds out that and then when there she's like interrogating him she says don't lie to me i love the idea that she would do that because she did she like didn't slap him in the books but she was physical with students like grabbing them grabbing marietta and like shaking her that's mm. when dumbledore went crazy it's another bummer you don't really see dumbledore like have that moment where he is in control. Yeah. Like he leaves, you don't get the frozen time where like he, didn't he get knocks to all these people Harry. out and talks to Harry to learn Occlumency. You don't get mm. that, which is a little devastating, but mm. you do get a terrible performance. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you Sorry. do get a terrible performance and you get the one line where Kingsley goes, you may not agree minister, but you got to admit Dumbledore has got style. Oh yeah. That was which cool. is a good line. But not yeah, by Dumbledore, <laughs> not by Dumbledore. <laughs> it Dumbledore. was still a cool departure. Mm. But just, you know, missing a little bit. They should have said in that line in the movies that you got to admit, Dumbledore's got style and he's got a lot more style in the books. So check out the books. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should have done. I thought the centaurs looked great. I really liked how they looked. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was good. And they actually hinted at the centaur and ministry tension. They showed yeah. like a newspaper article earlier or something, um, which I'm kind of surprised that they gave that some screen time but that that tension did exist in the movies yeah um which i thought was good because then again when by the time you get umbridge there she was just i don't know stoking the fire yeah and the centaurs were like yep none of that so yeah, yeah. they kind of just go off and carry her off i thought that was actually real well done i don't like the difference though between the book and the they like missed a lot of the like umbrage is the centaurs didn't have any like talking lines and like you don't really yeah. understand mm. you don't get that tension between umbrage not liking half breeds you and, don't know why she yeah 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 like there's not that. much there and Wait, then didn't like she make a comment about half breeds or something in the yeah movie? She says one thing to the centaurs as creatures oh, of near in human intelligence. Ne yeah. That's which really was all, but you don't get like her oh, hatred okay. of half, half breeds. You don't really understand that in the movies. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was one thing that I was like, I feel like that would have been good because then you realize how much they could torture her because yep. she's just mm -hmm. saying all these terrible lines. Yeah. And you then, just, just and then the danger the for deeper. Harry and yeah, the, and Hermione <laughs> Being there with the centaurs, yes. you don't get that yeah. like vibe that they're in danger. They just get up and leave. Yep, yep. no big yeah. deal. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you like them into the ministry? That the so when they're able to um, take centaurs, not centaurs, when they're able to take Thestrals yeah. to the ministry. How do you like them into the, in the ministry? All that ministry scene. It felt quick. Yeah. They walk in the ministry and it's like the first room is just boom. Yeah. Prophecies. I don't know. It felt like it was just a blur. I, I yeah. like it happens a lot in the movies. I keep expecting the book and then it just compressed and all of a sudden they're walking around the prophecies. And again, I get it. They have to cut things. Um, I was hoping we'd get hints at it later. Like we did get the death room, but the time yeah. turner. Did we get that? I don't think no, so. No, I'm just oh, saying yeah, like no time, time turner, turner no that was brains, one we talked no about a lot last room. podcast, yep. I feel like. What was the other one? Because yeah. mm, someone I don't know, over nothing here else. likes time turners. <laughs> um, yeah, so we didn't get any of that and that's fine. Or baby the face. The prophecy room yeah, was yeah, so yeah, that's right. Yeah. That would have been kind of funny to see. It could have been visual. Yeah, they could have done that really well All visually. of that, yeah, would have been so All cool. All that is such visual storytelling. They just could have knocked that out of the park and they just skipped over us half of it. And that's when you're like, they. it's a short movie. It's the shortest movie. So you're like, Give me an extra half hour in the ministry. Right. Show me every every the room. Shortest you know? movie, crazy. Know. Even the like Death Eaters appearing. I, like, would you have known that who they were? I don't know. Just the no, way that yeah. the encounter. It wasn't like they were terribly, terribly afraid for their life. Yeah, you mm. don't see Harry being in control and kind of giving like a nudge to the kid, saying like, yep. "Hey, we got to get out of this situation." Mm -hmm. Like, if 
I just didn't think you would grasp all that. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. There is one cool scene that the Death Eaters do, though, that Lucius takes off his mask, but he does it with his wand. Mm-hmm. And it's like liquid. Oh, that, yeah, that, that was so that was cool. cool. I was yeah. like, that is that the visually that looked great. I love that. So it did much. have a lot of I would say this movie had a lot of visual that were really yeah. on point mm-hmm. or yeah. added ones that I thought were great. Like they're doing better in the movies as mm-hmm. they get out with like cool yep. little visual elements that they put in there. You're like, oh, wow, that like looks cool. But I still do wonder about um, how much budget and timing and like mm-hmm. just movie making things play in like with the the statues of the fountain. I'm wondering, did they try it and it just didn't look good enough? Yeah. And they're like, maybe. oh, it's coming off cheesy. The CGI isn't there. It just uh, let's just cut it. Um, did they have more scenes planned, but then there were timelines they couldn't hit. So they had to cut other things. I don't know because it is short. We're going to have to go this. By. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to like dive into all of it. I, I almost know. watched the movie again later because <laughs> yeah. I find myself like typing up my notes and then I'd miss things because it yeah. happened so fast. Yeah. But then I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't mind if I forget things in the movie, but I'm looking forward to watching them all afterwards <laughs> know, again, exactly. you know, yeah. all the behind the scenes. I can't scenes wait stuff. to go to Universal. I know. Oh my gosh, I know. Universal, <sighs> we got, yeah, we'll go to some Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> so Ooh, we're not going to make it in time. Cursed Child. For but yeah, the September 1st uh, King's Cross would be awesome. Um, Speed read, guys. We'll yeah. do, we'll do oh, because Hot of the Prince time frame. In a month. And yeah, just because that's Deathly like Hallows September's just not month. far enough away. But <laughs> you That's laugh. your funniest joke yet, John. <laughs> 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 it's probably going to take us another year to do the whole thing, which is great. Come on. Yeah. It's so awesome, we're guys. complaining, but it's just funny how we're talking about like, oh, we want to hit this deadline. Well, it's it's just, I guess it's going to be September <laughs> 2024 that we'll have to go. You know? Come on, yeah. Or we'll just have to go and do all the stuff whenever the time happens, and then we'll go yeah, back. Exactly. Some exactly. September, you know. There we go. We still have not found, we still haven't hit that part in the book and the movie where it's like Harry Potter Mecca. We still haven't been there, guys. Ooh. So when we hit there, when we get there. There's also trivia nights I want to go to. I know. To win. I know. Oh, that's cool. I know. She's like, that's what I really that. want. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. people so keep sending trivia. me stuff and I'm like, this is a really cool cidery that has trivia. I'm like, can we mm. go? And then my coworker, I said, she's like, they won't let you go. I was like, no, because there could be <laughs> potential spoilers. She's like, why don't you reach out and ask the trivia host to only go up to book five? Oh, And that's the my. only questions they'll do. And I wonder I if they like, would actually. Ooh. Like that, that would be to us. We can sell cool. the podcast. We yeah. try doing this thing. Oh like, my goodness! That would be kind of fun. That would be awesome. We could record the whole thing. I know. Doesn't and then I was like, great. Even if we do get a yes, I'm gonna have to come up with like these big sound <laughs> yes. canceling headphones yep. that I can only I'll listen to the question, and then I have like, to go uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I was thinking of all these crazy the questions things. beforehand. Yeah. I was like, I, I just want to go. And yeah. then you know when to mute. That would actually be brilliant. I'll be down, guys. If you want to ride along. That would be so funny. I may all reach out and see what they say. Do it. It doesn't hurt to ask. We're getting all these questions about U.S. presidents at Trivia Night. We don't know that at all. <laughs> but you talk about ministers of magic or headmasters. Yep. We're or in. spell. We <laughs> what spell is what? <laughs> Forget about the real kings world. Oh, here. The Goblin Rebellion. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> that's going to be one of the obscure questions. That's why I think some of the Harry Potter trivia is tough because they're going to be like, what year was the Goblin Rebellion? Yeah, but we got yeah. gonna know. literally the four of, <laughs> Danny, but the four know, of no. us. Well, the oh. thing is, there wasn't just one. Yeah. There were multiple. <laughs> oh my god! our answer could but be. But in the 1700s, that was one. But that's what I'm uh, saying. Like yeah, with the four of us, it's like, uh, he's history, recent, your spells, yeah. your character. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you're what I like am. You get, and you get everything else in. <laughs> your inappropriate jokes. You know the- <laughs> Thanks. That's really helpful. You're going to get the line where. It's right. Thank you for the compliment. Movies they could have done too. <laughs> this I feel like because Pluto's not a planet anymore, they could have made a fun little uh joke about that in the movies where Ron is coming out like half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like something crazy over there. It's just Wes. Like Ron's coming out half drunk and uh he goes, Harry, we saw Uranus. And they blew <laughs> oh, up yeah. Pluto. I was like, that could have been a funny little yep. ad in the oh movies gosh. where they blew that up. That wasn't Pluto in the movies. Yeah. I know it wasn't I don't in the movies remember. at all. The space room wasn't in the movies. But he acted drunk and I can't remember. Mm, no. In the movie? Well, I don't remember either. Ron was Ron wasn't in it. They never went into that room. They never really they split up a little bit, but they all reconvened oh. back into the veil room and they all were taken by Death Eaters. Mm-hmm. And they had like their their uh wands to the throat kind of thing. 
Okay, how did you guys think, um, before we get to this one line that we'll talk about, how, uh, how did you like the the f- battles in the Ministry of Magic between the Death Eaters and the kids and between the Aurors and the kids and then Voldemort and Dumbledore? All really quick. Yeah. It didn't feel drawn out. Um, and it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel like... Um, the kids are barely surviving through yeah. it. Like they're getting by mm-hmm. with, it didn't feel like that in the movies. Nope. But I think in a weird way, the movies felt a little more, I don't know about more accurate, but the way it played out, it was almost hard for me to picture in the books, the kids getting away from all these death eaters. And then the way it was happening in the movies, in the movie, it, it felt like, accurate somehow where i'm like you know what it it didn't feel absurd i wasn't watching it thinking that would never happen um it was different than the books but it still made sense to me watching it um the flow of things running around with all the prophecies smashing but it felt like the death eaters didn't want to hurt the kids or didn't want to um kill them at least yeah seriously yeah um Hmm. even at the end they had wands to all their throats when, like why put it to their throats come yeah, to think of it i'm um, like you do that with a knife if you're trying to like like cut someone's throat but like <laughs> with a wand wouldn't you aim it like at their head or their heart or just like you don't need to aim it at anything you just hold it um but one of the kids would have died if they wanted them to yeah. you know yep. but by the time the orders came in and all the uh you know kingsley and all the other order of the phoenix people i thought that was good chaos a lot of things moving around it was like but we don't even know that Snape is the one that told that. Yeah. True. You're right. We don't really know how they found out. There's I don't think no, that was mentioned. Appear. I don't know. It's just like there's so many it's missing Powell's. parts. That I don't get how you can get the whole story. Just enter into mm. my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you know something is a book, I feel like you kind of dismiss some of that and say, there's a deeper story that yeah. explains it. And I don't know it. It's fine. But here's yeah. where we are. Does that ever happen to you? No. I would you want to know. You're like, it should to. be explained if it's here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always doing that. Like, what happened? Yeah. Mm. Like I said. Yep. But also because we don't know I the don't end like of the story. Pieces. And that's happened other times where then it comes back around and then Dumbledore explains something at the end of the book. And then we're like, oh, that's why that happened. Oh, OK. I still feel like that could always happen in a story like this mm. where you say, all right, well, in movie number six or seven, maybe that's where we'll put all these pieces together. And we'll like start to understand version. it. Yeah, exactly. movie or any kind of story. Like if the story's not over yet, it could always be explained later. Mm-hmm. Even with like the time turners. We're like, how'd they know about that? I don't know. But then like in the next movie, you could find out, oh, they know because this happened, that happened, flashback. I guess. And if it. it's the same director, then maybe. For the and next all year. the rest yep. are the same, right? Yeah. I don't know. That's David cool. Yates, he does the rest of them, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. There's a There's a few good things in there when they do it, but like, a lot of it, I just struggle with the battles. Like, it doesn't have the same gravity that the books yeah. do. Even the Dumbledore Voldemort duel, which looks cool. There's parts of that that really do look cool. Like, this is this is a scene, too, that you realize, like, okay, this the magic that they're doing, Harry couldn't even, like, fathom some of mm. what they're doing. It's like, they're doing advanced stuff. Yeah. Even how they battle with the glass. Like, he breaks all the glass and then sends it at him and Dumbledore, like shields it that stuff is just cool but it, it's in the movies or in the books it just has such more weight to it mm-hmm. um there's a few cool things i have to do again like some of the again mr sexy himself ralph finds i think does so good with voldemort there's one scene that i love that he does where he's he uh he like glides in and he goes, you have to mean it, Harry. And then Harry like turns around and is about to curse Voldemort. And Voldemort, without not using his wand hand, just swats away Harry's wand. Not like he doesn't even make contact with it. He just does like wandless magic and just goes like that. And then his wand is off. I'm like, that is to me so yes. cool that he's that powerful that like he doesn't I even need to use that. his wand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, it's like a quick scene. I mean, I'm noticing like him whole doing hand motion quick. like that. Yeah, the whole thing was quick. But I'm like that in a quick scene to have something like that where you see Voldemort is that superior with magic is mm-hmm. is you get the weight that Voldemort in the movies is 
a seriously good magician. Hmm. Seriously good at magic. I kind of like that. What did you guys think of two things? When Sirius punches Lucius <laughs> and then he goes, get away from my guts and then he punches him. And then what do you think of Sirius's last line? Do you remember his last line? I'm glad that you don't remember it because I hate it. <laughs> he Clearly goes, it wasn't memorable. Nice one, James. Oh. And then he gets cursed. Wow. Yeah. By Vada Kedavra and falls yeah. through the veil. What do you think Ugh. about that line? Some people love it. Some people hate it. I hate it, but I kind of like the punch in a weird way because yeah. it feels like um, it's not all about magic. Sometimes you just yeah. want to punch somebody. <laughs> it's a very uh, it's a muggle Sounds moment, fun. but yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like cool. Where was that? It was the the same right before they started fighting again. Mm -hmm. He like jumps down and then he's like right with Harry, you know, kind of they're fighting together. And that's why he says, nice one, James. So it's a nice compliment to Harry, but it also feels like he's stuck in the past a little bit. Maybe Mm -hmm. that's closer to book. I was going to say that correlates better with the book. Yeah. Because it's almost it almost makes him delusional. In the, yeah. In the yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. He is so mature, like, are they going to the father realize? figure and like seems put together? Yeah. Mm. But he's like a little bit unhinged in the book. Not unhinged, but I don't know. You're right. I think but that's cool. then yeah. it would have made more sense if they put in the history where I was just saying earlier where Harry goes to Sirius and Lupin asking about his dad. Hey, mm. The, mm. I saw this in Snape's memories, can you explain my father's, you know, he seems like a bully. And then if he said this, nice True. one, James, I feel like that would have yeah, helped. Yeah. Like that would have worked a little bit better for me. Yeah. To agreed. then be like, here, I'm trying to show you the positive side of your dad. You yeah. know, like to reiterate that he wasn't the bully that he saw. And but we don't even see that in his memories. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it also feels like almost like it makes me think he's that Sirius has been in this exact situation before with James enemies all around shooting off spells, oh, fighting I people like it gives me the impression that that would have been like the norm for them. Yeah. And right. maybe we find out that it was, but again, like they were young. Yep. They were teenagers in their twenties, you know, 21, I think is when the Potters died. Yeah. So like it, it just Whoa, feels a little bit really weird. Young. I'm like, Oh man, like I didn't realize that young. Yeah, so I think it's just odd. Again, if we find out later, we get some flashbacks, and it's like, oh wow, Harry actually does the same moves that James used to do, and they kind of naturally fell into this fighting rhythm that Sirius was familiar with. Mm. And like, okay, and for anyone who likes that line, I totally understand it because it's it's endearing. It shows the connection between Sirius and Harry. Um, but for people who don't like the line, I could also see why it would feel like. Harry isn't James. He's a yeah. different person and you can love him for different reasons. And like, he can remind you of James, but mm-hmm. to like actually confuse him with James feels a little like misguided. Yeah. Like he's not your high school friend. Yeah. He's someone else and you need to be like a father figure, mm-hmm. not a friend to him. I don't know. And there is a part to it. Like we've talked about, he's been in prison for a while. He's still like mm-hmm. living in his glory days, you know, wishing he was yeah. back in the good old days. So Maybe part that's of that line, yeah, sometimes it makes that part of that line, that makes sense. But I'm like, for the for for that to be the last thing that he says to Harry, just kind of. But in the book, what is it? The Bellatrix thing, like yeah, the last it, you yeah. got. So I mean, I guess that's better than that. Yeah, that's kind of true. Maybe. I think the last thing in the in the books was maybe him telling Harry to go and go with the others and get out of there, while they mm. duel him. Maybe. But the last thing, yeah, the last thing he he's just mocking Bellatrix, and Bellatrix actually lands a curse, and then he falls through the veil. Mm. Oh, uh, just sorry to catch us up there. I didn't, I have mixed feelings about Lucius telling Harry how the prophecy worked. Yeah. Instead of that happening later. And um, everyone hears the prophecy too, which drives me a little was, crazy. It was out loud. Everyone heard it. Yep. Um, the kids don't wear their robes a lot in this movie. If, in the <laughs> books, I just picture them always having their robes <laughs> yeah. on. But in the movie, like they're just wearing like random clothes. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what happened to your robes? Put those robes on. Represent. Oh, um, just a funny little random thing. Um, Tonks has more of a presence in the movie maybe just because oh yeah she was in like Game of Thrones too so like she's like she was one of the wildlings and so like she was a familiar face so seeing her I was like oh okay seemed like she had more substance um also 
of all the things they missed from movie to book, I think it's interesting that they showed her tripping when she was walking down in uh, 12 Grimald Place. Mm-hmm. She stumbled over something. And yeah. I'm like, when is she going to stumble when it's important? It's only a matter of time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I even forgot that she was a clum- she's yeah, clumsy. She's clumsy. Oh, she's yeah. too clumsy. Yeah. And it's going to cost someone their life. Like, <laughs> oh my or maybe gosh. she's just going to, she'll drop another prophecy or uh, she'll. They pretty much destroyed the Hall of Prophecies. According to yeah. uh, the movies, Ginny does one curse and destroys every prophecy in the Hall of Prophecies. Right? Like there's so many. Um, <laughs> Which is kind of cool. That's like her shining moment. But in the book, she's still so much cooler. But you don't even know. Is she like. I know. Kind of. I guess she, you're like, they show her from? face, but she doesn't talk. Yeah. At all. Um, Sirius punches Lucius. The Avada Kedavra on Sirius was quick. No mystery because Harry already knows it's final because he saw it with Cedric. Um, Dumbledore came later in the movie. He didn't show up in the, in the death room. Um, Voldemort trying to teach Harry the Crucio, which was weird. Um, Dumbledore did not get knocked down by Valdi. Um, <laughs> I didn't like that that happened in the movie. He got knocked down. I'm like, whoa, hey, whoa, that's yeah. not cool. Um, that didn't happen in the books, right? No. Dumbledore is in control. Dumbledore is in control. He actually seems a little, uh, a little scared in the books. A little nervous. That, For uh, Harry, one, yeah. In there's particular. one moment again because he's juggling. Yep. Ten different mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. He's trying to keep yep. Bellatrix down with the the uh, centaur or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He's trying to keep Harry at bay. And he's trying to battle Voldemort. And when Harry tried to move and started, that's when he got like scared. He yeah. actually saw like yep. nervousness. And that's cool. But it looked like he was really struggling in the movies. Yeah. Again, good on screen. You know, I get it. But it, he, he did eh. deliver the line. It was foolish for you to come here tonight, Tom. Yeah. And I thought good. he delivered that pretty well. It was a shining moment. Yeah. One shining moment in the whole movie. <laughs> and then that's I also one. love. What do you say? No, I was just saying it's great when that's your real personality. You're not acting. I know. Yeah. Like you could just say and it's like, oh, that's perfect for I this know, line. I know, exactly. I know. <laughs> but you're, yeah, just yep. being you know, like Kristen Stewart. Anyways. Yeah. That's one thing I, I hate because this, again, this is probably his best movie, but it's his best movie because he's so cold and he's not necessarily cold, but he's like distant in the mm. books. So you kind of get what he's doing. But one thing I really, really love, one of my favorite parts of this movie is... At the end of this little duel, when the, one of the last things, Voldemort breaks the glass, he sends it all flying toward um, Dumbledore into Harry, and Dumbledore kind of blocks it, makes it into sand, and it's all there. And then at the end of that scene, when he realizes that Dumbledore kind of like shielded that stuff, <clears throat> Voldemort just has this look on his face, like, Ugh. like this is going to go on all day kind of look. Hmm. And I love that. I thought that was really well done by Ray Fiennes, Ralph Fiennes, because it's just like he. <laughs> I don't even mind caught that. He under yeah, it's such a small little thing, but he he understood how good both of them are, and he just needed to express it in a little facial reaction. And I think he nailed it. Mm. Like he could go all. I was gonna say he can go all night with Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh <laughs> they're a good match for each other apparently. <laughs> but i love that little facial expression that he had there the possession scene was a little weird for me i kind of liked it but it was a little strange but one thing that i didn't like in it but was i feel like you wouldn't understand like if exactly. i just watched the movie i don't think i would understand what's going on yep. there because we never see this no. mind control thing mm-hmm. ever yeah you don't get that moment in dumbledore's office too when he's like the two divided thing. They're trying yeah, to figure right. that out. You don't yep. get like, there's some kind of possession thing going on. You don't get that. That crushes me. Another thing that crushes me in that is when the reason that Harry comes out of it is because he sees his friends, not because he sees Sirius, not because he's sad and he wants to die mm. because Sirius is dead, mm. which is a small change but I feel like that changes a lot for Harry's reaction. This is why the end of the movie to me sucks because Harry spends it with his friends rather than mourning Sirius's loss. And the, the serious mm. thing doesn't seem to have gravity at all in the movies to me because Harry is not yeah. depressed after it. He gets over it. He doesn't yeah. destroy the office. He goes back to Dumbledore. Dumbledore's debrief with him is maybe 20 seconds. And Harry doesn't even seem all that upset about Sirius's death. And he just moves on. All you get is one like you know looked good his scream but it was silent yeah. you don't even hear it yep it like it didn't have enough heft to it it was yeah, just kind of like 
all right, it was there. It was powerful. It, like stinks to see Harry like that. Yeah, but it's like for but a we second. didn't feel it. No, you know? but then like it should linger. Yeah. Like in reality, it can't just be that gone. Happens, you're living in that for a while. Yeah. It doesn't just magically go away. Like you said, yeah, oh, you I'm going to hang out yep. with my friends now. I know, exactly. It's not how it works. It also felt weird when Harry like kicked Voldemort out of his mind. It felt so final in the movie. Like yeah. he's gone now. He's yep. out of Harry's mind. And at least from the books, we're kind of left like, is this still a risk? Is he going to come back? How does this feel? Is it like Voldemort is going to be able to enter Harry's mind based on how healthy he's processing grief or, you know, love mm-hmm. and things like that? So it just felt so final. Um, again, not not nuanced. Uh, it was not subtle. It was yep. just like, done. Let's move on. It's just, yeah, the, the ending is just too different for me. I just said Harry didn't seem that distraught about Sirius in the end. Yeah. Um, I said, but I kind of did like the end. Really? Yeah. I don't know why I wrote that specifically, um, (laughs) but Harry just seemed too solid. I wrote, um, like, again, it felt like he processed and whatever, it felt like there was a few days or weeks of processing that we just didn't see on screen and there was no indication. But then by the time we see Harry next, he felt like mature already. Like he already had moved on. Um, I liked it for the sake of him feeling better, mm. but it didn't feel like real. Like how could it be? Yeah. Um, but he did feel the ending scene solid is, is what I yeah, And the ending scene is them all walking toward the train station and they have their muggle clothes on, which is why Danny likes the scene so much. Cause they're all wearing muggle clothes. Muggle clothes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but also it, Harry and Luna have... holding hands briefly. Yeah. I wrote that. I thought that was good. Interesting though. connection. Yeah. I wrote, it. I think it was good. Um, because like, Luna like, does it. Luna does it. Yeah. And it's just like, again, a little human moment. But like, I don't remember if it feels slightly romantic or just kind of comforting. But either way, I liked it mm. because it's just connection. And and I want to mm. see Harry trusting people around him. I want to see these bonds of friendship grow stronger. And that's, I think, why the movie at the end felt like that. Mm. It felt like all the things they experienced brought them together. Um, yeah. And that's why I felt good, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. And I like that too, because in Luna's mind, I feel like it's not romantic and Harry's, it might be, maybe she, mm. maybe he's like nervous about that. But in, for Luna in the movies, she's such like a pure hearted person. When she says, I'm sorry that, uh, like Sirius died or whatever she says, your uncle died or your godfather died. Mm. She like reaches out and then grabs his hand, just like a little small comfort thing. And then she's like, lets it go. Like just that small thing mm-hmm. I think is good because Luna understands it. Here you might not fully understand it, but that's why I think she did a great job with expressing what Luna would do. I feel like that's something that Luna would do. I think mm. that was great. But then as soon as the Luna scene is done, then it goes to the train station. The movie's over. So you don't get him, Harry at the lake alone. You don't get him at Hagrid's. You don't get his like his, his you don't get Harry's deep depression, which the books, the end again, I, I said this last podcast, but my, maybe this is my favorite part of the books up until this point is these last two chapters of this book. Cause they're masterful. Harry is in the throes of depression and sadness and angst because Sirius has passed away. Sirius has died, but Harry's still able to move on because he has, he has people surrounding him. Like he gets out of the train station and the whole order is there. Some, most of the people from the order are there waiting for him. His friends are still around him and you don't get that in the movies. I feel like mm. you just, he, Harry just is too optimistic in the end. I don't love that. Yep. Don't like optimism. Do we have the Order of the <laughs> Phoenix like threatening the Dursleys at the end of the movie? No. Oh. Which would have been great too. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved that. I can't remember. Yeah, you're right. Because that was kind of an important thing. Like yeah. he's got, they got his back and it's not going to be like every other summer. And yeah. did we even quite figure out in the debrief, did Dumbledore talk about why Harry has to be there? Mm, not that I recall, but because again, I thought that was kind of nice. Like Harry doesn't want to go back. He'd rather go to the burrow or whatever else. Um, he's forced to go back. Dumbledore explains that, but then he gets the order backing him up, giving yeah. a little threat for him. I think that was, like you said, very nice, masterful in the, in the book. You miss it in the movies. You just get general vibes of things are going to be all right. Yeah. Any other last notes on the movie before we go into awards? Fudge seeing Voldemort felt anticlimactic. 
Yeah. He just goes, uh, I don't He's remember back. exactly why, but it feels like weird timing that they like just got there. In the book, it felt like we were so in the zone with Dumbledore, Voldemort, Harry, Bellatrix, that all of a sudden we like look up, so to speak. Yeah. And the ministry was filled. But mm. then in the movie, it felt like mid battle, like a few people started arriving for work. Yeah. All at the same time. And you're like, oh, what? <laughs> um, it was just kind of funny. I was like, weird. Okay. But at least he saw him for a brief moment yeah. before he escaped. Got a little lucky, I guess. They had all those newspaper stories, that little montage right after that. Oh, yeah. Him being back, but that's about yeah, all that was they good. did. So it was decent to like yeah. end it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, just, it's a good movie. I was critical of it, but I actually like this movie. I think it's good. I feel like, it's yeah, at the beginning movie. and the end of all of our podcasts yeah. for the movies, we have to be like, it was really good. We, we like it. it. It's we great. Like We're it. big fans. It's just nothing just, compared uh, to the books. The books are just You can incredible. never compare to the books. Yeah. yeah. I should have worn my shirt. The book was better. Because <laughs> <laughs> it always is. Mm-hmm. All right. Who wins the, we'll do like the house cup award for this one. Who, what's your favorite moment in this movie? Who is the best character and who is the hottest tamale in this movie. Who wins the hot tamale? You know my answer. <laughs> Voldy is the hot tamale. <laughs> He's so good. So He's so good. good. Oh, what a babe. Mm. <laughs> Who wins your guy's hot tamale? Umbridge? <laughs> yeah, always Umbridge. Um, Legit, her acting kind of makes her yeah, that does worthy pretty of great. hot tamale. Oh, man. It's weird just because we did just do the book one. So I'm trying to think movie only. How I'm did it feel? Separate. I feel like I need to give Sirius more credit mm. for this one. Like almost like giving him the house cup because he did a lot for the story. He felt more significant. He was guiding Harry a little more. I feel like really like Harry gets it. Um, but then again, Harry did cause all the problems in this <laughs> story. <laughs> um, if it wasn't for Harry... Sirius wouldn't. Well, we don't have to get all into it. Um, I'm going to give Sirius the house cup um, because it was a real I, internal battle. <laughs> I like him so much better in the movies. Um, I think and uh, hot tamale. It's tough. I know. I don't feel like any like all the people that I think are so like, spicy right. lose their spice. In I, the know, movies. Yeah, I know. I know. Like really even McGonagall, out. she doesn't I have know. as big of a role. Mm -hmm. She, she doesn't, doesn't say have, have a zingers to Umbridge too. Yeah, she only has one little zinger, which. Um, Imelda Staunton goes, is there anything you'd like to say, McGonagall? Professor McGonagall? And she goes, there are several things I would like to say. <laughs> but that's it. Oh, yeah. You Do you practice really these voices lines. in the mirror? <laughs> you got that down. <laughs> <laughs> McGonagall, she's great. McGonagall and uh, Snape, you got those, <laughs> those McGonagall, down. but she loses her spiciness. Jenny loses her spiciness. Neville loses her spiciness. They all do. That's so yeah. sad. I know. And they're the hottest of tamales. I would have, yeah, because Ginny was mine, but this one I'm like, maybe Luna in I'm gonna like give, a yeah. mild, oh, Luna is calm. good in the movies. Yeah. I'm going to give it even... to the Weasley twins, though, because mm -hmm. they're still good. And like yeah. you said, the moment with uh, the kid Little who had kid. the writing on the hand mm -hmm. and then their departure would still felt significant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll give it to the Weasleys. It's really hard because I feel like no one has character. And it's <laughs> funny because the whole time I said it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I guess it does. I know. Kristen, you give your hot tamale. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sums it up. It's tough. It's tough in this movie. Cho. No. <laughs> She's not even there. She's no. Like, no. Yeah. I'm. I don't know. I was laughing in my head. This has nothing to do with anything. But I was, when I said that thing about Umbridge needing to get laid, I thought of Clueless, where the kids should have. <laughs> hmm. Do you know Clueless? I don't think I do. Yeah, but I don't... Where they like try to set up two of the teachers. Oh, uh, really? To fall in love. Mm. And then they, they get better together. grades. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice. I thought of that when... Didn't Filch have the chocolates or something? Yeah. He was yeah, eating yeah. the chocolates. Yep. I was like, oh, that would have been perfect. A little <laughs> note from Umbridge. Whoa. And then like... That could have been great. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Filch, that. and then I they like can, it. Yeah, that's... Clueless. I don't know. That would have been funny. Anyway, that doesn't answer your question, but that's my mm. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who to give hot tamale. It's a tough one. There really isn't one. Mm -mm. I know. Except Voldemort. Voldemort is probably the hot tamale. The honestly. Thestrals. Sexy man. The Thestrals. <laughs> the Thestrals. There we go. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. There you go. Honestly, Fred, George, Voldemort, Imelda, because she's such a good actress in this one. I'll give it to Grop. 
There you go. Aww. Yay, girl. Aww. Baby drop. <laughs> Cute little drop. There we go. Yeah, that's good. He was so cute. I know. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Bellatrix. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew someone was going to give it to Bellatrix. Not because I, I think that, uh, I think she just did so good in this movie. And mm. she just had that sexual energy towards when Voldemort. When she licked the <laughs> yeah, yeah, tattoo. Right? I never noticed that. So until this good. Time. Like the, the little things that, that she did. No, when she was, before she when broke they, out of Azkaban, she oh, licked yes. the tattoo. Yeah. I so creepy. Well, that was gross. Yeah. That yeah. scene was so cool. creepy. I like yeah. them yeah. breaking out. That was pretty neat. It was, yeah. And you, I think you said it, Azkaban is huge at that part. Yeah. It so big. When it zoomed out and it was just a tiny little portion. I was She's like, just Whoa. laughing in the broken, in the rubble. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's You're such like, a great character for these those types of characters. Yeah. Yeah. An actress for those types of characters. Yep. So she's perfect. She is so that. good. Um, who is, who wins the house cup for you guys? I think I said serious. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Yeah. I feel like I'm trying to make up for not liking him that much. <laughs> <laughs> because he was, he was, he was more yeah. solid. Yeah. Yeah. But if I separate it. Yeah. Oh, and favorite moment when, I said a uh, hot tamale to friend George and I feel like them leaving was a good moment, but favorite moment was really Dumbledore at the end in the movies, like mm. him and Voldemort. That was yeah. probably the best for me. Yeah. Mm. I'm giving the house cup to Luna. I think she did great in this movie. It's good yeah, she really did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Gosh, this is hard enough. Like picking ones for the books. <laughs> I know. Mm. Now you're like making me change it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. It's just interesting that it's different. Well, I know it's throwing yeah. me off. Like you'd think you'd be the same, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's not. At all. No, not at all. I did like the scenes in the um, the potions room, or not? Po- what the heck? Like, Prophecy room. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Always. I I can't pick. Any, I don't know. It's. Tough. I didn't really like one character like the most yeah. out of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But maybe it would be serious because he was different. Yeah. Wow, look at that. I you would guys... have loved to have said Ginny, but she didn't talk. I, know. I would have loved to say no, Neville, but he didn't do enough. You guys are just trying to compensate because you hate Sirius in the books. That way if people oh, really God. love Sirius, yeah. they won't hate us. <laughs> um, I do love that when Neville said, don't give it to him, Harry. That was yeah. good. And he found oh, the room yeah. of requirement. Like, But his line in the book is good. better. He's yeah. not alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And Hermione doesn't even really exist in this. I know. Right. I know. Ginny, yep. Hermione, like none of the trio is really yep. there. It's so tough. I know. This is, and I feel like we, we watched it a week ago, so it's almost hard to remember some of the stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I like both of your guys' house cups. There you go. I like right. Luna and Sirius. I'm going to do two. <laughs> Did you guys have a favorite moment too, or is that too tough? <sighs> she liked the table scene. She already said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Boom. Nice. Nailed it. Done. <laughs> One correlation from book to movie. <laughs> there we go. And it wasn't even the full thing. I like the CGI stuff. Like the grop, the Thestrals when they like yeah. first meet. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really. Thestrals look great. They looked really cool. Ministry of Magic looked great. And Luna explaining yeah, it, it to Harry. That was like yeah. a neat scene. Mm-hmm. That was maybe my favorite change over for the books. I thought they did a good job of adding that scene in. Like of you associating and understanding Luna before the end of the book. Yeah. Mm. I actually like that. That was probably my favorite scene. That's mm-hmm. my favorite moment in this one. Mm-hmm. Luna is such moment. a different um, character than I thought though, in the movies. Even like mm. the way she looks and stuff. I just pictured her more like aloof or nerdy or something. And she just looks quiet. Yeah, and calm. And like and yeah. calm. Very whimsical. Yeah. Wait, a lot of people think she's neurodivergent. In the movie or in mm. the book? I was saying the movie. Did you not? Get I that? guess I didn't catch. No, I don't know. I liked her a lot. It just was different than what I yeah. was mm-hmm. reading in the book. I would have thought more, more unfiltered and more like random odd things she would yeah. say. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's actually a good point. Yeah, because she was more under like you understood where she was mm-hmm. coming from yep. in the movie. But I don't think that's how she was in the book. It was kind of like these random thoughts yeah, and true. just like. You know, just a little bit. Yeah, you're right. We didn't get any of in that. her own world, mm-hmm. and you could connect more with her in the movie than you did mm-hmm. in the book. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why I can't, it's hard for me. I liked it, but it was just not what I pictured. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. 
And when I read the books now, I only have movie Luna in my head. And I'm not upset about that because I think mm. she's so good. But yep. it, it is a slight difference between the two for sure. Mm. Yeah, because I'm thinking of like people I've encountered in life that I feel like would be a better Luna. Than really? <laughs> Whoa. <Yeah. laughs> hmm. We'll go over those names later. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can figure out some people too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> wow, well, we always end this podcast. I, I have them having brain farts today. Thanks for listening to... How do I end this? Harry Potter the first time. Yeah. Ever. Anyway, thanks for listening to Harry Potter. Or thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter. Yeah, that's right. Nice. On a journey. Yes, you're thanks right. Thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter <laughs> the first time readers. Until next time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> we have the woo. Yeah, we, we all go woo. I'm sure that everyone loves hearing that, too. I was like, oh, I said, oh, yeah, she said book five was her favorite. And I was like, oh, it was great. But, like, I didn't really feel for serious when he passed away. She goes, what? I bawled my eyes out. And she's like, oh, my goodness. People are going to be so offended that you don't. But you guys <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna did love that one. serious. It is. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. Like, yeah, I don't know. I never felt like an attachment to him. 